And we go we know where thumb. I 
Friday, uh, the second day of September, AD 2022, to another fresh edition of the class Reloaded. Um, we're back again. Uh, today we have uh, joining us, uh, Daniel San, all the way there in Grand Basso County, Liberia. We also have Jerry Limnick Pia, um, one of our regular um, uh, panelists on the show. Uh, Senator Dillon will join us um, shortly, um, and then we'll, we will, as we go through the conversation. Uh, on tonight's edition, we will be, as usual, beginning with what's trending. Our panelists will weigh in on trending national issues, and then we will look at the uh, Liberia has made the international news once more this time around. Al Jazeera, there is, um, but not for good reason. Um, Al Jazeera reports about the um, the death of the auditor tied to the missing uh, 25 million. How public officials. Um, siphon money into the private bank account, and that's as a result. Gifty and other uh, auditors lost their life, including the late uh, Barton Yiswa, who was at the time at the uh, uh, internal uh, audit agency. And then we'll also uh, talk about uh, an EPS officer who was killed, who was murdered in, in February of this year, while President Weah was on the, uh, on the county tour in Nima County, but then the government reported that um, he had committed suicide. His wife was on a sister radio, Costa, um, Costa show um, um, yesterday. Uh, she spoke about how her husband was murdered and, and, and we'll be playing you some clip from there. Um, and then we'll also look at Liberty Party goes to Grand Basso County this weekend. Uh, they are expected to raise $20 million uh, for um, pre-campaign activity, you know, to help fund their uh, campaign related activity as we as we move towards 20, uh, 2023, we will talk about that. Uh, Daniel is already in Basel. We'll get to hear from him about the momentum and how things are proceeding. Um, and then uh, we'll open the phone lines, hopefully, and then we can hear from our callers and they can weigh in on the topic. Uh, let me also say welcome to all of our people listening uh, via radio. We come to you live on Bushra Radio 98.1 in Grand in uh, Monserrado, Shakta FM 102.5, also in Monserrado, Radio Dupa. All the way there in Grand Basel, 89.1. Voice of Lofa, 99.3. Out there in Vonjaman, Radio Joy Africa, 97.5. All the way there in uh, Maggie County. Voice of Gompa, 106.5. In Nimba County, Butor Radio FM, 102.3. All the way there in Sino County. Um, welcome, gentlemen. Welcome, Pia. Welcome, Daniel. It's good to have you here. Um, and it's the weekend. We're here again. Um, it's good to see you all. How you doing? Yes, um, we okay, and uh, this is a cause that we are committed to. So, irrespective of our own different challenges, we gotta do our hustle to take care of ourselves and our families. But uh, no sacrifice is uh, too big to make for the motherland. So, we will continue to to be here 
to talk about the issues, to talk about our country, where it's headed, what's going on, how we can uh, resist uh, some of the terrible things that are happening there. We can now pull our hands. Um, so yes, it, it brings joy to find ourselves here uh, three times a week. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dalia, how are you? I'm, I'm, I'm very, 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 very good. It's, it's always good to, to be here. I mean, while we are on the show today, you want to hear noise from the background because Basel is already fired up for. And uh, we, yeah, uh, people are arriving from Morovia, from River Says, Bikana is heating. We're looking forward to a very successful program tomorrow. But as, as always, it is a pleasing duty and an honor to be a part of this platform, a platform that uh, puts national interest uh, first where issues of concern are discussed, where things that people, other people would not want to discuss in the media have been discussed here. It's a privilege for me to be part of this platform. And uh, for the last couple of days, I've been out because of other uh, pressing engagement. But I'm happy to be back here tonight, and I look forward to interacting with our callers and uh, having an issue center conversation on this platform. Thank you, Daniel. Take, let take me care, say, I take, see. Take, take, care of, take care of those engagements you're talking about because we need you here regularly. We, <laughs> have, we have a phone, Daniel. You'll be serious. <laughs> no room for fun. No room for fun. You are a young man who whose analytical skill is strong. You understand the issues affecting our country. Uh, you are a major stakeholder, and 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 to have a platform that gives you voice. And give you much stronger relevance. I think is something that not just you, but all of you on the ground, Kanenia, who is a representative candidate, uh, other folks who are part of our tendency, who 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 who, who want to take a step into national leadership. You can have a platform that will help to make you, that will help to give you voice, that will help to give you relevance, and for whatever reason, whatever those issues are, I pray that. Yes, I'll tell you what, this, this, platform, this platform is very powerful because there are people there are people who are very committed to following the issues here every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And I was engaged by, by a couple of them, say, Sandra, we haven't seen you on the class reloaded for the exactly, last exactly. two days. <laughs> I, said, but, I said, but there are competent folks there, you know, I mean, there are, there are scores of competent folks here. Yeah, but this has <laughs> If I just stay away from this show, I know you talk about two, three days, one day. You know, because we use my number a couple of times. Oh, I'm calling you. Also, I show that people are calling me regularly. And, right? And guess so what? If I just stay over this place for one day, people get concerned. They will be called. That, that's how. That's how we we see what is ongoing. That's why we should take it serious because yes, a lot of yes. people depending on this. Uh, yes. They want they want the country to be helped. They see people who are standing up, and they, they want you to be there. So you know, it's a if it's a sacrifice, and it's a sacrifice worth making. So, yes, so sure, for the country. The ground, please find a way to adjust whatever the challenges are and be here regularly. It can't just be about, that. Stephen, it can be about Stephen Pierre, they don't know, no, no, no. They don't have, they don't have <laughs> senator already, man. I have plenty of things to do. He just, you know, he's just tracking himself, which is good, all right? But we should take this thing by the horn and let the don't just be complimentary. Yes, we have to take charge of it because the, the public is looking up to us. Exactly. So uh, uh, um, let me let me also say welcome to all of our folks in the um, in the comment section. I see people uh, logging in from Picano, from Claritown, from Baltimore, USA, from uh, Wendigo, from from Nima County, Tapeta, from all over the world. I see people uh, joining us. We'd like to say welcome. We're glad to have you here. As, as we go to the show, we will be um, putting forth some of your comments on the screen for for people to read them. So as we begin the show, Pia, you know, normally we start with what's trending. From your end, what's, what's the latest trending issues? Uh, I, 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 just, I just started following yesterday that most of the places that, I, that, that have tenure, that the president has been renominating people uh, in those tenure positions. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the LRA, the election commission, I just realized that Obama Duclay's tenure was mm -hmm. on the verge of being over. He was re-nominated at the Laboratory Communication Authority. Uh, Zoda Wantatos, Israel Akinsoya, and other people won, Madame Zappa or whatever. If I, if I quite remember, they were all 
um, renominated. And, and, and so as I was following that, a few things caught my attention. Uh, at the LRA, uh, my brother Thomas Dona was um, renominated. So I was wondering why, what happened to his, uh, his deputy, not, not Aaron Collibard, they're come to King Saki. She, 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 she was nominated twice. Oh, so the law says she can be more than two times. Yeah, All right, so, so EJ has nominated her, and then Mr. President, we are dated the second time. Okay, now I understand. So I was concerned about her not being renominated, but thank you for providing the, the basis for that not being the case. Uh, but, but, but one of the things that caught my attention, which has been running around Facebook from the whole process is, uh, I've been following that there was initially a hole on my kinsman, a bastard brother, Israel Akinsaya. Uh, I'm told it was uh, Grand Bastard Senator Jeriton Kape who had raised some motion or whatever it was uh, that led to him be put on hold. And I saw different reasons all over social media, and I think it will be important for the Senate itself to, to clarify. And the reason why I think this is important, Stephen, we just rejected a lady who should have been one of the deputies at the Liberia Maritime Commission. And our justification was that she wasn't suitably qualified for the job. I mean, all the other people in post said, but there wasn't coaching. It doesn't matter who are related to if they are competent. Even the president, we have his own brother, it's a qualified person. I think that in my mind, there's nothing wrong for them to say. But we stopped that lady on ground that she was not qualified. Uh, recently, we stopped Darlington County on grounds that he was not also qualified to, to, to be over there. And some of the things I'm hearing on social media that Mr. Akinsaya was not able to, to demonstrate and justify that he has the requisite credential for the job, uh, somewhere even alluding that he could not establish that he earned a high school education, uh, not more to talk about going beyond that. So my point is, if Darlington Conley, the lady from Maritime, and other people uh, are being rejected on account of not being qualified, uh, then we should do justice to everyone. If some of the rumor is as good as Senator Dillon is on because he's involved with the processes, he got more information than we do. Because I, I saw a post on his page when the whole process was on that said LTA on who. You know, he was giving like a, a breaking news for all the different sub issues that were taking place. So maybe he got much more information, but I'm only following these speculations, right? And all I'm saying, if some of the things contained in those speculations are true, then what, are, what is good for the, the goose is also good for the gander. Uh, we cannot be seen cherry picking in, in the things we do in the national interest. So because Israel was national vice president of the national oil company, big job. And if somebody is telling me now he cannot even establish his high school credential, then how did he even become local vice president? We don't just, you should not just be awarding title to people, uh, you know, for reasons that are beyond the academic suitability. And he's also already been on that LTA for the first, the first period of his tenure. You know, he's simply been renominated. And if these things we're hearing are true, then I, I'll be asking, so what happened the first time he went before the Senate? Worrying their due diligence, uh, or they were just and, and 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 if those things are also true, that we have a fundamental problem with uh, with Jerome Kape because his remarks for withdrawing whatever motion he had for me uh, is unrepresentative of a national leader when he said the, the, the elders of Grand Basso has spoken to him about a son of the county. That should not be the measure of the decisions we take in 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 in, in the national legislature with regards to public public officials who have been nominated. It doesn't matter whether we come from the same county with them. It doesn't matter what uh, elders from our county say to us behind the scene about the person who we deem not qualified, you know? So there could be other issues, but I just, want to, I just wanted to, to punch more into this and I rest on that for now as my trending issue. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. Um, let go to you. Welcome, Senator. Um, we'll come to you after, Daniel. And, um, and maybe just you. before I move on, I, I know you have this issue about the Agias, you are team. But I need to tell you that a lot of media entity, international media entity, are directing themselves to Liberia more, more be on the ground. Even now, as I speak, I'm told that a special crew from ABC is on the ground, and 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 that should that should that should make you to reflect historically. When a country is in serious trouble, when a country is headed down the the, the, the wrong path, 
it, it grabs the attention of the key media institutions. Well, coming to that, yeah. No, I know you're coming to it, but I, I, I just give you a privileged information that not just the Al Jazeera people you found there. I know ABC News and all. ABC yeah. there, and more other international media people are dispatching troops to come into the country. And the major issue about that is historically, it portrays a trend, a trend that is not good for the country. Thank you, Pierre. Yeah, we'll come to that issue um, later on in the program. Yeah, um, Daniel, what's trending on your end? You muted. You muted, Daniel. The last couple of days we've been uh, focused on our rally here in Basel. And, uh, so we've been we've been we've been in and out. Today I'm here, but on the national scene, I think that there's a lot that's happened. The denial of the the president nominee for for the 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 airport authority for me is very key because i think i uh, as we all endeavor to to add value to public service we we look forward to having competent individuals who who can deliver because uh, the airport is uh, one sector one minute daniel senator i see somebody posting say d15 is off well again welcome in for I welcome you. I said welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Somebody said D15 off. Yes. Uh, the station went. The station just went off. Let me say good evening, and I'm here. I uh, had to run to to be part of the class tonight. Yeah, the station is off, but tune to Shatter FM 102.5 is very clear, loud and on. Yeah, you're tuned to Shatter. Tune to Shatter FM 102.5 in the Montserrado area. It is on. Thank you. Daniel, Daniel, yes, so I, I, I was saying that as we all endeavor to add value to public service, I think the 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 quality of individuals, the credentials, the whole that are being appointed by the president of those positions should be very key to us. And I, I was not surprised when the Senate in its uh, majority voted uh, not to confirm the, the 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 nominee for the airport. I was also concerned about the the unanimous confirmation. I think a couple of senators, few of them, uh, are on the same point, more distance himself from the confirmation of the Chief Justice of Liberia. But I think uh, there's a new, there's an emerging debate uh, on the the fact that the CDC government has been is now perceived as a regionalized government. You see that almost every key officials, all of the three branches of government. Heads of the three branches of government are all from one region of the country, which for me is not a good, it's not a good sign. We were, I, I went to Bas, I, I came to Basel yesterday while they are tired this morning having a conversation, and somebody raised a very important point. Say, why if there's an election dispute in 2023? And uh, do you expect the main opposition to go to a court that will be controlled by the wealth of the campaign manager of the president? Because I'm told Edwin Snow will be the campaign manager of George Weir. So I said that was a very valid point. Because when you have the, the chief justice of the country from the South region, the president from the South region, almost every key official of the country from one region of the country, it is not a good, it's not healthy for our democracy. And I think, and no president who is concerned about sustaining the peace and stability of the country would do anything, anything such as that. So I think, I mean, it's now, it's, it's, it's a new topic that many of us are discussing in every corner of the country that the government is regionalized. And as we give you how, Critical the 2023 election is why is something like an election dispute sparks up and the main opposition dispute the, the results that will be announced by the election commission? Where do we go? Do we go to a hmm. you know? So this, these are issues that we're looking out there. I mean, that training, I mean, at this point, thank you, Senator. Welcome, uh, and it's good to have you with us. Um, we miss you on uh, we miss you on Wednesday. But we had a great show, um, as always. Um, it's good that you're back with us. Yeah, thank you. You gave me a senatorial duty, and sometimes I'm caught in between. But I'm happy to be back on with you, all of you. Let me say good evening to our people in Liberia. Good day, wherever you are following us on the social media. It's always good to interact with your people. I see a lot of people having concerns about a pension or retirement bill passed by the Senate. I will speak to that. I see what is training as well. Um, as um, Pia has an issue 
with uh, the confirmation of Israel as Messiah. I will speak to that. And yeah, I'm always happy to be here. Of course, uh, I will take will take time. Good Daniel is here. We will take time enough to talk about Liberty Party. Um, our fundraiser tomorrow in Grand Bassett County. It's a big deal, and um, I'm on my way already. Um, it's going to be a heavy one in Grand Bassett over the weekend. So I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe I'm the guest tonight, so you ask me the questions. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, um, uh, um, so I mean, yeah. You know, what I was thinking is for us to, for us to um, take up some time, read the, um, read that amended um, pension and benefit law. You know, the act. Right. Read it. Right. Digest it, and then we find a day next week to have a full conversation around it. I'm not ready. So we'll do that. that. We'll do that on Monday. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do Monday. that on Monday. Yeah. It'll yeah. yeah. be good. Yeah, because I we'll just did bits and pieces. I've not read it, read through the full uh, act. I need to read it, digest it, draw a question, and then so that, you know, we can have a very uh, uh, engaging Correct. conversation. Yeah. So let me, let me play this thing. Um, and then uh, and, 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 and Pia was, let me just give a little backdrop. And Pia was kind of talking about it. Um, oh, yeah, so yeah, before yeah, you, yeah, before yeah, you yeah, go into your, 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 your second heart training issue. Oh, well. <laughs> 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 hey, look, let me repeat this. Let me say this again, my people. Bourgeois radio is off technical issue. Yeah, stop repeating it. We're not read it. We're not say it. Bourgeois D15 radio is off. Tune to Shatter FM. Once in Montserrat, tune to Shatter FM 102.5. Shatter FM 102.5 is on in Montserrat. A bourgeois radio has technical issues, so it's all. I hope they will get it done before in, in they Basel, In Basel, we are, we are on, we are on, so nothing to announce in Basel here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but still, uh, Dukba uh, in Grand Basel is on and always on, so. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, regarding the Israel, regarding the Israel against Sire confirmation, since it's just a training issue in passing. Yeah. Um, the act says to be qualified as uh, a commissioner, you must have um, expertise or relevant experience in the sector. When Israel was first confirmed four years ago, I wasn't a senator. The act is not straight jacket as compared to RIA. RIA says you must have a bachelor degree or above in anything aviation. Aviation related should be the base of your bachelor degree. For LTA, it says you must you must have the expertise or relevant experience in the sector. When Israel was first confirmed, I believe it was at the time that issue should have come up. I took it that his four years sitting as commissioner in the sector and running that sector qualifies for relevant experience. Mm -hmm. And it was based on that that I voted to confirm him. Anything short of that, I will have voted no. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's a that's a that's a very yeah, so so uh, I mean, yeah, the, the law says that um it's good, but uh for the good of the public, so what what is the fun about what we see trending on social media about his academic qualification? Like me, Israel doesn't have a college. Like me, Israel doesn't have a college degree. It is a fact. It is not anything that is a deep secret. But when you were first confirmed, no, it was the that. perfect time. Yeah, it was that. the perfect time to bring that up. I and fully, but I was in senator at the time, I so fully, I fully agree with you. The law says relevant experience. A man, right. who served, a man who served in a position for four years definitely got the relevant experience. Exactly. So you're right. Correct. The time Correct. He got his was the time he should have actually been denied of, of even serving as Correct. Time. That's okay. Correct. Yeah. I just, right. I just, we just hope that uh, they wouldn't repeat the uh, incident of June 7 where the. Uh, the you remember I asked that question? I remember, and that was a very brilliant yeah. question. You know, I mean, I asked that question because, because I, yeah. I wanted yeah, to yeah. ensure that they don't do it again exactly. because so the law says pay attention, the law pay the attention. law says you get the law says you can block somebody from having access to the internet if their activities are illegal. 
Exactly. The Jones Slavian protest was not illegal, and no other no, protest was in a demo. Yeah, it's, it's not illegal, so you don't block them. To do it again, that means you violating the law, and you will face, you will face, you will have to face okay. some of us. Right. Thank you. So, um, Pia was, uh, let's go to our first segment. We'll talk, uh, and then we we'll divided this into two, you know, sub -session. So, we have A, B, A. We'll talk about the Al Jazeera video. B, we'll talk about uh, the late EPS officer who was murdered in uh, in, in Lima while President Weah was on the country tour. I'll play some clips for you to listen, and then we can weigh in. So, uh, Pia was saying something. Let me just give a little backdrop. Pia was saying something as you watch international news trooping into your country. It it, it 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 is a clear indication that uh, there something important is something interesting is happening, right? The last time we saw the influx of uh, of international news outlet to Liberia was the June seven protest. CNN was there, Al Jazeera was there, uh, 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 Radio France International, and you know all of BBC. Everybody had trooped into the country to report. Now we've seen a trend. We see now Al Jazeera is in the country. We learn uh, uh, um, through credible sources that uh, ABC, is, ABC News is in the country, CNN also in the country, and other people doing interview. But let me play the, the audible or the audio on this video is not too. It's not the best of the best, but I just want everybody to just increase your volume a little bit if you're listening, and so that we can play this audio and then we'll start the conversation. Let me let me let me put this on. Discovered that twenty-five million dollars in public funds had been diverted to the accounts of senior government officials. Shortly after, all three were found dead. One fell off his balcony. Gifty and a colleague were found strangled in their car. A state investigation ruled their deaths as accidents. In the death of Gifty was a state sponsored murder. Because for even a report from the Liberian government stated that my wife sat in the car and died from suffocation, nobody can believe that. But I will not rest until whosoever that is responsible for the murder of my wife in the type of form and manner, they will find no peace. They will have no rest. Gifty was killed because she was investigating government corruption, you know, says human rights activist Gongolo. The, 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 the level of corruption in Liberia is accentuated under President George Weah's regime. The president of Liberia has strong influence here to the extent that if there are bad laws that the president wants, this legislature that should be representing the people will pass it without thinking for the for the people because most often they are bribed. They take brown envelopes to pass bad laws. In August, three senior figures of Weah's government were suspended after the U.S. Treasury imposed sanctions against them. The president's chief of staff is accused of corruption and directing warlords to threaten political rivals. The managing director of the Port Authority is accused of funneling money into private accounts, and the state solicitor general is accused of shielding suspected criminals, blocking investigations into government corruption. So we reached out to those that have been sanctioned, as well as government ministers, but none of them were willing to be interviewed. It seems that when it comes to corruption, there is a culture of fear and of silence, with people fearing the consequences of telling the truth, afraid of retribution and of being killed. But for Gifty's husband, in the face of threats and intimidation, there is courage. Fear is no longer an option. Nicholas Hawk, Al Jazeera, Monrovia, Liberia. Well, um, you 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 watch the clip. You know, I mean, um, our sympathies um, goes out to um, the the family of uh, Gifty, Abu Pide, uh, Batin Niswa, and uh, all those who who were brutally murdered um, in line with the um, with the uh, missing twenty five million. You know, the audit. We 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 all you know woke up that morning to news about the death and now I just zero and this has been almost I think almost two years or so and, and now you see the I just zero is now reporting these things. Um, um, uh, um let me begin with you uh 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 Pia. when you when you see a situation where news of the past that uh, we thought had gone down a beginning to resurface beginning to resurface like a year to election what message you think um um, they, they're sending out there. Look, the, we live in a global village. 
in as much as we have all these independent and sovereign nations that are existing all across the globe, the world is a global village. And things that are occurring in every nation of, on, on earth are to the interest of that global village. The media being the most critical group of people that don't allow things to just die as one thing it will happen. There's a culture in Liberia where people believe that when something occurs, it will require noise making for two weeks and then it will die down. But there are just certain things that will not die down, even if they appear to be, because there will be a continuation of this kind of in-depth investigation and follow-up, particularly by credible international, not just media institutions, but bodies such as human rights groups, et cetera, et cetera. So all of the things that are happening in Liberia, if anybody thought they were now under the cap and they are dead, absolutely not. Uh, people are just been doing their own different follow-ups, uh, doing more in-depth investigation. And this time around, I just think uh, based on the way the country is proceeding, seeing international sanction coming in after, after many years, it, it, it has focused the, 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 the international institution, particularly the media, on Liberia. And like I said to you when we we're talking for you to start this conversation, that there are a lot of international media institutions that are headed for Liberia. And I was saying, when you see these things happening, you got to be historical. You got to mm -hmm. reflect. I guess for Liberia, all over the world. What does it mean when the focus of international institutions, organizations, journalists just begin to be focused on a particular country or in a particular region, all of that? It, 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 it shows that there, there, there are bigger things ahead. Uh, but what has caught my attention mainly in this effort is that when the guy said, after doing all of the things he wanted to find out, he tried to talk to the sanctioned people. And he said, no, no, we're willing to talk. And that, that shocked me because aren't these the same people who are writing 10 page letters to respond to the sanction? Exactly. Saying, this charge against me, my answer. This charge against me, my answer. You now have a platform, an international, uh, credible, acclaimed media institution such as Al Jazeera. They want to help you. All the big book you are writing in your letter, they want to help you to elevate it. So they want to be fair. They mention you in their story that you were sanctioned. And once they mention you, ethically, it is an obligation on the part to, to allow your voice to be heard to lend credence to your voice. So they come to you and say, let's talk to you. You're unwilling. All of them, if you want a reporter, all of them, no, no, I'll be willing, willing to talk. Yeah. And then he says, what are on the issue of corruption? He reached out to government ministers. He want to talk, talk to government ministers as to what happened in the country. And nobody wants to talk. And then he was saying that is because there's some culture of fear. And, and that's, that's where the country is. If you are a government minister, you got a clear view and a clear appreciation of what's happening in the country. You, you, you stay away from interview because you, 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 you dare not say the truth. And you don't want to look stupid having an interview where everybody knows you're lying. And you dare not go to say the truth because there'll be repercussion. Yeah. And, and, and the kind of journalist interviewing you, you're not the regular journalist who yeah, that's around what I'm saying. These are bad signs for the country. Tell me bad signs. You are challenging the Americans. All right? Some other guy who is not even yet sanctioned, most likely he may be sanctioned in, 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 in times to come, jump on Kerry Street and say, America is involved in scare tactics and trying to intimidate the government, it's not gonna work. All right, you have Al Jazeera, go and give your voice, they're running away from interview. You know, it's, 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 it's terrible, and, I, and I'm happy that the international people still paying attention to how these auditors were killed. And they are forming their own their own basis as to why they were killed. You heard him saying, if he was investigating, was one of those investigating. Twenty-five million dollars. So I'm dead in the view of the international people. She was murdered because of that. So you can take it to Bakhtar Yeswa, you can take it to Albert Peters, and all these people who've been suspicious. If somebody tells you that Gifty and Albert were in a car. And they would not, they were they apparently were suffocating and they might be played. Hey, brother, and the man said, get out from over my car. The man would have talked to you and said, get out of the way. But meanwhile, he was dying and suffocating in the car. All these crazy information they gave, I'm glad that people are still following. And 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 our hope, my hope, is that no matter how long 
that there will be accountability. That those, whether those people will face the wrath, if not the law, or by some divine forces for what they did. Because you cannot just take away life. A promising young lady like Gifty, many of you who into other world, who know her, or who knew her, say the kind of person she was. And for people to just grab them and kill them in the middle of a key street in our capital, with some stupid explanation, and they get told that everybody should believe it, and you have people who could have said pathologies and all kinds of things giving us information that don't make no sense. And then look at the whole thing is there. I'm glad that it's not there. And 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 we're looking forward to see um, the array of international people that will be trooping to our country in in in, in recent weeks. Follow on some of these very issues. Thank you, uh, Senator. What's your what you you listen to the, the recording and uh, if if you if you if you if you if you president we are what should you be worried? Or, uh... Oh yes. Thankfully, I'm not President Weir. <laughs> because if I were president, there wouldn't be sanctions in the first place. You act. Somebody just asked a question, for instance, what happened to the situation that happened between my security and a gentleman, his girlfriend? I suspended that gen my security immediately. And uh, did what I could do with the family to ensure that the people medical issue were resolved. I suspended the thing I could do to my security who acted on his own, also his line of duty on his free day. But since it has some reflection, negative reflection on my office, I immediately took action. I suspended him off the job and allowed the law to take his course. He went through investigation. He was charged to court and what have you. I took action. If I were president, I don't want to say if I were president, we are. I can never be president, we are. He can never be Dillon. I, would, I, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't have sanction on my officials because I wouldn't need a foreign government to tell me that I'm not doing what I should be doing. It is a shame. It is embarrassing. It is reflective of what's happening in the country under this regime. And you notice, I don't say under the administration because something is different between regime and administration. I believe administration is where good leadership is exhibited and regime is, yeah, that's my interpretation. So yes, and there are a lot of international media people in this country, few of whom have interviewed me as Senator and um, on good uh, professional grounds, I'm advised not to uh, make it public so that their broadcast can be, uh, the, the, the publication of the news at the time they want to broadcast it and can be already in the air. And when you see an array of international institutions and media institutions coming to your country all, almost at the same time, especially right after the US has slammed such a thinking sanction on some officials with the very, very likelihood of more names being sanctioned, it tells a lot that things are falling apart and the, and the center can no longer hold. No longer hold. Tanya? Uh, yes, I'm here. What's your take on that uh, video? Well, there is a terrible point in one room that lost all over your place, my man. Yeah, they know you on show. <laughs> very excited. They didn't even know how to relocate. Very excited. Yeah. <laughs> Professor and I went to school together at Amy Zion University, and I, I share his pain. The way Gifty and I, the other fellow, was were, were killed in a vehicle on Broad Street, of all places on Broad Street, is it's, it's very much unfortunate for our country. Two things here. It speaks to how ineffective the, the government is in terms of uh, the enforcement of non-criminal behavior. Because if a criminal who walks in broad daylight, go on broad street, kill people and put in the car, and the following morning, the president go on the radio and say, boyfriend and girlfriend were discovered in the car, the insinuation is that they were doing something unholy in the car and the both of die. So even the president himself did not help the investigation. Okay, it's very, it's very much unfortunate. And I think uh, the length of time in eight days, 
you have you have you have four auditors being mysteriously killed. I would, I would say killed. I would not say die because when you follow all of the incident, look at uh, Nyiswa. The lady has had to speak out now, and I encourage her to even do more. Okay, so that these international wires are now focusing on Liberia. For me, it's it's, it's not a strange because you see, there's a tendency for the local media to sweep these things under the carpet, right? Mm -hmm. an, an incident occurring in Liberia is one week, it's on the radio, and everybody talking about it. I mean, one week after, nobody talks about it again. So our situation has always been such that we have not been able to tell our own story to the world, okay? We have not been able to tell our own stories to the world. When you look at the front pages of the newspapers in the morning, I mean, most of the headlines are influenced by who has the deepest pocket, okay? So it's good that these international wires Oh, I think we lost him. I think we lost him. So let, let me announce to the public that we, we will discuss the pension bill on uh, on Monday. So I see a lot of people posting about it. Uh, relax. Uh, on Monday, we'll have that conversation. So um, because we too have to read it and get to know what is in there before having the conversation. But uh, um, um, I think we lost Daniel, right? We lost Daniel. Um, let me let me let, let me move to this um, Melvin Early and, and the late EPS officer who was um, who was uh, murdered while President Weah was on his uh, his county tour in Nimba County. I'll play a clip. Uh, our sister show, the Costa Show, had an interview with her. Um, there are um, three clips. I'll play the first one. We'll have a conversation. I'll play the second and third one, which are a little bit shorter. The first one is about two two minutes long. Um, the second one is about one minute long, which is um, short clip. So in five minutes, we should be. So let me play. Let yeah, me so play. before you play, don't forget our background conversation to have more public participation today. We want to open the line for at least for 45 minutes for our people yeah, to we'll, participate. Yeah, and we'll go long tonight. We'll go long today. Right, uh, right. Yeah, we'll go long. Yeah. So let me let me play let me play the first interview. Have that conversation with me. Hey, tell us. I will not talk now. You you will talk. It was on February 19th when my husband called me by 5 5 15. He said, Oh Rufina, the nurse were getting my son ready to go to school. We're getting my son ready to go to school. He called me. He said, hello. I said, yeah, hello. He said, Rufina, I'm on an attack. I said, what happened? He said, Rufina, I'm on an attack. I said, but Melvin, you think that my chest are hurting me? He said, no, mama, I'm on an attack. The government is getting ready to kill me. Ah, Melvin, what happened? He said, my people are getting set to kill me. I said, ah. He said, you know, two of our ah, you will not see me no more. Within 10 minutes, you will not get me again. I said, ah, Melvin, what are you saying? So I had a boss, the security to the place there, let me say, Rufina, you have to put this on recording because the, the, the Melvin have not said this to you before. And I have put the phone on recording and I listened to her conversation. While we were on the phone talking, I didn't get my husband again. So I tried calling my husband back. I couldn't get him. So even a person who works, even a person who works somewhere, anything happened to them, you say you go to the hospital, the people will call you, they comfort you before they tell you say that you lost your husband. But the service and nurse, the service for me, Fina Bruno, because I have her normal. I have her normal safety in my phone. When I put up coming, hello, Rufina, I say yes, hello. She said, my kissy sister, hello. I said, yeah, hello. She said, you and your husband talk? I said, yes. She said, maybe I just came herself. I said, mama, stop that all the joke. I said, maybe I'm at the just come for talking. Now, Fina, I'm going to call you to tell you that Melvin K is there. Yes. So wow. when I talk about how she gave the phone to another black lady, who I used to cook and carry food to them on Sunday with my husband on duty. The house she talked, oh, my kissy sister, your husband just killed himself. 
I said, another time for you to give me the news. You're supposed to ask me where I am, my position, before you tell me that my husband died. I said, Mama, my husband did kill. He said, My husband and I just come from talking. I said, You stop that joke. That's how I call my husband. My husband full ring. Hmm. So you hear her. She says she um let me let me play the second one. Yeah. Okay. The thing I'm going to from the day my husband died. I've been running here and there with children. I was like now far from Lufa a few days when they were having that and the two when they were having that campaign in Lufa. So Thomas father was there and I was working with Thomas father. I had a female operator for Thomas father company. A lot of people were going he you went mean, for meeting operator. You used to work for his for his company. Ah Thomas father help it. Thomas father company he got now. I had a yellow machine operator, the female operator for Thomas Father Company. The few days, he, the workers been behind me to go back to go back to Liberia, that the government want to see me. So I will not stay to where I was. I have to live with my children again. So I'm calling upon the UN, the Human Rights, the United Nations, who is there for people that have saved my children and myself life? Before we be passing through all those things, end of the day, something happened to us. People said again and say, Oh, a jack will like the woman husband story. So I'm appealing to them to really help us. Even my baby, he five years old, he said he was wanted to talk. I said, They not call you yet. Yes. My baby can explain to you how his father was killed. He will explain everything to you. Hmm. So I think you to help me save my children and my sad life. Because if those guys know that every day we talk on platform that they will expose them, they will always hunt us. And they know how my husband was killed. So no security for me for now. There is no security. So I'm appealing that the UN, the United Nations, the human rights, they didn't look after my children and us. So they can't harm us. Just we are government is very hard there. Just money, we are government. They are very hard there. So I'm appealing to you to help my children and myself to see protection for us. Okay, ma'am. Hmm. So you 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 um Selena, you listen to Ruth as she's called Ruth early. Um they had they had just gotten married five months uh before um Mervin was, was murdered. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and there's this last part of the recording that will break your heart. And let me just play that, then we just go for the conversation. There's this last part of the recording. It's about a meaning law. I want you, I want everybody to take a listen. This is from a four-year-old, this is from her son, the four-year-old baby. Just listen. At this, Josh Money, we are government. They are very heartless. So I'm appealing to you to help my children and myself to see protection for us. Okay, ma'am. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for your strength. Thank you for coming on. And uh, we we um, we will we will, we will we will do what we can do. We'll spread a word for you. We'll talk to some people and see what we can do for you. All right, bye-bye. So, my plan will get in touch with you to send you the money. Hey, my man, what's up? You all right? You yeah. want to talk, talk? Yeah, talk, now, talk. Let's hear you. What's your What's your name? Melvin. Oh, you're Melvin Early Jr. That's great. What do you What do you What do you want to say to us? I want just up for my Father. You want justice for your father. That is very good, Melvin. Melvin, how old are you? Four years old. You're four years old. You want justice for your father. Those are powerful words, Melvin. Melvin, you will get justice for your father one day. At this. So you yay. Um uh, it's it's heartbreaking. I mean, you know, it's very it's very heartbreaking, especially when I listen to the four-year-old kid talk about 
he wants justice for his father. Senator, I know, you know, it's an emotional thing for some of us, especially we have kids, uh, to see um, a child growing up believing that his nation has failed him by not doing more to bring justice to their family, to bring closure, to bring, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm actually short of words. I don't know how to describe it. I, it. It was a very emotional thing for me when I watched it earlier this morning. I, 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 no, no child should go through such traumatic um, situation. I think um, we are in his, in his, in his bunch of, of, of crooks. They owe it to that kid. They owe it to other Liberians. They owe it to us to bring justice, to bring closure, to bring an end to this, to this nonsense. What do you have to say, Senator? <laughs> you know the the um, I'm short for words. It's it's emotional. The the families of the three missing Liberians met with me in my office yesterday, and they gave me some new revelation. And uh, yeah, and I have committed to getting the Senate involved again. In February, there about last year, I had the Liberian Senate to summon all of the security people in this country, the security authorities, from the police to the Ministry of Justice and Defense and all of those to come to give us answers regarding the whereabouts of the three missing Liberians. And during that hearing, it was public, it was live. I'm saying this because I'm coming to answer your question, because somebody will be confused as to how it ties together. During our hearing, the Ministry of Justice and the police made us to understand or to believe that their search for the three missing Liberians led them to a body or two, three bodies that they could not identify. And they asked the family for them to take a DNA sample of the living relatives to match it with the bodies or the remains of whatever bodies that they had, they claimed to have found. So that science could settle the matter. To match it, to see what uh, the three missing Liberians they were searching for could be likely dead and that they have found the bodies. We were made to believe by the Ministry of Justice, the minister himself, and the police authority at the Senate in a public open hearing mm -hmm. that, if, that the family refused to cooperate, to allow them to take DNA sample, to match it with the bodies that they found. The, the family informed me day before yesterday, you no, know, yesterday in my office, that is not so. And so based on the latest information from the family, the three families in my office yesterday, I am resurrecting this issue with the three missing Liberians before the Senate. Anytime a citizen goes missing or mysterious deaths take place, there must be full investigation to bring forth closure to these matters. Either by finding perpetrators or erasing the doubt over the mysterious death. My role as a senator, I won't drop it on that. Melvin and all other Liberians similarly situated deserve justice. I have been following Facebook postings from Lila Lila, as she called herself on 
the social media, giving us vivid, gloomy information and picture as to how Baten Niswa died. And so I'm going to use my communication to plenary, resurrecting the three missing Liberian citizens issue, to blend it with all of these other issues for a full plenary intervention with the security authorities in the country. And Melvin issue will be a part of it. I was attacked by presidential EPS people. I took this matter before the Senate. The Senate summoned all the security authorities in this country, including EPS people. And before the Liberian Senate in open session, they declared me national security threat, code red to the president. That is why, and even the Senate has not found a solution or how they must to muster the courage to determine this matter involving one of their own. So right now, even as I sit, I, I am on the threat list. I'm a threat to the president of Liberia. So I cannot go within distance to where the president is. It means I'm looking for my own harm. I've been declared. I know it's all for the politics. Hmm. I'm a threat to the president politically to remove him democratically from office. They all know that. But they use all of this political nonsense to endanger people's lives. And even the Senate, where I should be protected, has not found the courage to put the security people in a place and to protect one of their own. That is why our state functions, wherever the president is, you don't see Senator Dillon because I don't want to be in close proximity to the president and security people, I don't harm me or humiliate me. And then somebody will say, well, you should have known better, right? So I'm preventing it. But when it comes to my representation of the people that elected me, even those who did not elect me, we are on our obligation to seek their well-being, their safety, their happiness. And that is why we will resurrect the issue about the three missing boys and including this new information with Melvin, that Melvin's widow and that baby who can be any of our son. Seeking justice. If, if it is not piercing enough to, to trigger our conscience as national leaders, then I don't know what else. We'll bring this back to the mat to the Senate. And I'm hoping that it will be on the agenda on Tuesday. Because I will formally write and that communication will be ready on Monday to make the agenda for Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you, Pia. Uh, uh, um, when you when you listen to a four year old say and before then in June 2018, if you can recall, there was a bulletin issued from the RRA to the effect that should on site anyone found stealing airport equipment. Airport security and the AFL, the Armed Forces of Liberia, by whatever means that they got the AFL messed up with that, there was a bulletin issued in June of 2018 to the effect that anybody caught stealing airport equipment should be shot on site. When we critical voices raised the alarm and insisted that that was terrible it was it was unlawful it was a means of getting at critical voices people who love George we have told us to shut up imagine a critical Jebelimi peer a critical Darius Taylor is caught or is grabbed in the night, quietly, mm -hmm. 
Bono in the vehicle, driving to the airport and shot dead. And they display his body the next day with one AK around him. And they said Dylan was shot on spot, stealing airport equipment. The way humanity has left us in this country and politics has so clouded our sense of reasoning and our humanity in us is gone for our fellow human beings. There will be debates in this town. Oh, they don't know where consult in the day, not knowing they can do stealing in the night. They caught him, God moved from behind, they killed him on spot stealing airport equipment. There will be another group of people arguing that Dylan cannot do so. It's not possible. But Dylan will be dead. In the meantime, a family, will, a family will be grieving while there will be political debates in the air, in the public, that he did it, that I he, we think Dylan can do it. Oh, God, move on behind it. You know, the politics has taken over our sense, our humanity. That we, our sense of reasoning is even gone because of politics. We resisted that to the core that even the army came, the, 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 the armed forces of Liberia came with a clarity, clarity that they were not a part of that bulletin. And the government had to take it back. These people hit dissent. Auditors die here mysteriously. Uh, uh, the issue when there was this talk about money missing from the bank, Nathaniel Innes, is this his name? Nathaniel Innes? Matthew Innes. Matthew. Matthew Innes got killed or died in a way that only heaven can explain today. Gifty and, 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 and uh, Af is it Abba or Abba. Afro Peter? Abba, the, Abba. Abba Peter. Peter. Died to the, the way they died today, only heaven can explain. Imamwe Baten, Baten Nyiswa died how the way he died. How can you fall down from your, how can you fall down from the And, and the, that are, the, the Baten Nyiswa that I knew, the Baten Nyiswa house that I knew and his room that I knew, the place they claim he fell down from, except something happened to Baten that night because Barton had never opened that particular door for more than six months because he had suitcases and other stuff behind that door. It was like one door there that never is never used at all. How all of a sudden Barton goes out, quote unquote, gets drunk, goes in his room, take all the suitcases from behind there, only to go for them. Doesn't make sense. All these mysterious deaths, and you name them. Precious Copa and the late six year old girl, uh, kid baby, who was raped to death, and a whole lot. Our role is to bring these things back before the place we have oversight, hoping that majority of us can feel the fatherly feeling, the morally feeling, to hold these security people feet to the fire. We Thank brought you. this thing before the Senate before, and the way the issue was handled and presided over by Senator Sir Joseph at the time. You heard Nyombi Kanga, whether she was right or not at the time, she got emotional as a mother, and the tea she was drinking, no, tea even on though him? she on him emotionally. Sometimes the way we conduct ourselves and the people's business in the legislature can make you sometimes you want to do some un 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 unreasonable things to your colleagues. But in the very people you're fighting for, how many persons did not insult Nyombi in this country for getting angry as a mother to waste tea on sir? Thank you. For, 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 for the ill manner in which he presided and I joined that session. When mothers were crying about the children being raped, people mourning about the people, loved ones getting mysteriously killed or dying mysteriously. And when we needed answers, one person took the gavel and dismissed the session out of partisan sentiment. And then the majority, the institution, the majority does that. And then they feel that fighting get wasted out along with the majority as though we are not doing anything at all it is it is painful this is unfortunate 
Pia, let, let come to you. You you um you listen to the four year old talk about I want justice for my father. You think you, the country has let him down? The country has been letting everybody down, not just about a four year old boy. Um I pay particular attention to the Melvin situation because uh, you remember I worked at the mansion during the last stretch of the Ellen administration as a press secretary for the last six years. Um, Melvin was a part of the presidential detail. A quiet and jovial young man, jovial young, jovial young man. Melvin went to my office on many occasions for different things. All right, if you in such a corridor and you are accessible, sweepers, everybody will come around you. There were times maybe will come because he just was not clear financially and he wants some 20 or 10 dollars. You come to my yeah. house. Yeah. 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 yeah, there were times he came and he said, Man, the press secretary, you left bluffing, but man, every day you get all kind of bleeding on. And your man we did a look good too, man. I said, oh yeah, Melvin. I think on three different occasions, I put some clothes in plastic bag, brought it to work, and gave it to Melvin. So I'm saying that to say we were connected. We had a relationship. And we met him, even President Selly met him at the mansion in the EPS. He was not somebody recruited during the early period. He's been in the EPS long before President Selly took over. But it didn't matter whether she met him there or he was part of the immediate presidential guy. So when the president moves around, maybe sleeping somewhere or just touring, there's a particular proximity of the president that certain people can come in. They call that proximity the diamond. Maybe he has from President Selitan always been in the diamond. I'm told during the weird period, even when they went to Nima where he was killed, he slept on the summit that night and he was in the diamond, meaning he was in the immediate area where the president protection was to be guaranteed. And if you, so I'm saying that to say if you follow that story and the fact that, he, that he was in the diamond, something stupid must have taken place for which they wrongfully targeted and killed him. There are certain people around the president who are extremely trigger happy. And one of the trigger happy individuals shout him. And the best thing they could say was that Melvin killed himself. Melvin did not look like anybody who would kill himself. Melvin was experiencing the EPS more than all the people they put in. In fact, when they took over, they enlisted all kinds of people with no background, no training, no discipline. They enlisted in the EPS. If you are counting on people there to show example, to lead by example, Melvin was one of them. Because when you're working with people, you see some people got behavior and you know, this guy will not talk. Quiet and always paying homage to, to everybody. Once you're in that corridor, he didn't look desperate and, and, and angry to say he lived in an angry life. And his level of understanding is such that if there was something frustrating about the EPS, he would rather walk out and say, I'm done, I resign, than to kill himself. So the truth is, maybe they didn't kill himself, but we don't know the fact. That uh, yeah. her husband, who, who, before we have became president, her husband who, who, who carry arms regularly, right? On oh, no, President Selly, he was he was carrying yeah. arms every day. That's she said she said when we have became president, he 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 they only assigned weapon to him twice, so they will take it from him when he leaving the marshal because when they took over, they said that he worked on President Selly, so they were not inside of. Him. You know the same thing we heard from everybody who were working in previous government. The fact that you work on the previous government, this new government consider you an outsider. They think you, 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 you know, you're a spy. So he was, he was a victim of that, of that circumstance. So on the unfortunate part is a lot of people pay, don't think that people serving the country. They think when you work in government, you're serving a leader, and which is unfortunate. People are civil servant. They work for their country. They don't work for administration. They work for the so, job we are coming and leave the, the people who will stay there. So one of the one of the things that, that we experienced during the Ellen period, almost all the weapons that are being used by many people in the security, not just EPA, they were they were internationally assigned weapons. So weapons that everybody had a new, how many ammunition they gave them the new. There must be a real thorough justification for every single round of ammunition that was entrusted to you that is not available. So yes, maybe, like I said to you, President Selly met him in the EPS, 
he carried arm through her. Not just that he carried arm, he was part of the immediate team that was responsible for the president's security. He was in the convoy. When you see the presidential convoy moving, Melvin was in that convoy armed. If the president went and she was sleeping somewhere, Melvin was there, he was among the people armed to protect the president. Melvin was a professional EPS officer. He had a long history in the EPS, unlike people who just jumped in. So based on my interaction with him, Melvin would not have killed himself. He would rather leave, right? So, but maybe we would never know the truth, even with all that his wife said. And that, that, that's the painful and sad part. And because the man who, who, who the EPS... Let me ask you a question. Something she said in the interview, she said, Mary had called her and said his life was in danger, right? And, and that they were after him to kill him. While that conversation was going on, a few minutes later, she, she lost contact with him. Only for Fina Bono to call five minutes later and say, Melvin, call you, ask her, and say, Melvin, call you. She said, yes. She said, oh, but the major key, he said. So that whole thing is not new. The only thing that is new, because she gave that explanation before, the only thing that is new listening to that was the portion that was added about Fina Bono. But that she called Melvin, and they were on the phone, and Melvin said they were going to kill him, and he thought he was talking low. In fact, there was a recording to that effect. That we came out the conversation, yeah. and that recording was spread around. If we hear Melvin talking, and they were talking low, and say, oh, and I hear you talk low, and say, I can't talk loud. People coming to kill me. They won't kill me. So those are not new, except for the Finabono aspect. And the Finabono name coming up for me is not strange, because even though the EPS has stroke on the head, but in reality, it's, it's Finabono who, run who runs the EPS. I have some information about Finabono that never happened in Ellington. For example, our press secretary, I was scheduled to meet the president, but by official schedule, I was scheduled to meet her every morning, right? She starts a day with me in, this, in the National Security Advisor. But beyond that official schedule time, I can walk into her office any time of the day once I determine that there is a need to do so. And when I'm doing so, I don't go to protocol. I walk straight to the door. The only person who will say, let me see whether she's available, is the person they call the ARC. That's the agent in charge. She's at the door of the president. The ARC will open the door and put her head in. If the president has been out working, he will say, oh, she, she been out. But because somebody opened the door, when she lifts her head, she will want to know why they opened the door. So she will ring the bell, and the people at the back will go to her. And when the person go there, they'll say, find out from the agent, what was happening? They say, oh, Mr. Pia was there. Oh, let him come. So meaning only she could stop me, not even the agent. The agent will be constrained to open the door. In the current arrangement, if, if, if the press secretary want to see the president, go to Fina Bono, Fina Bono say the president basically not going there, he's not going there. All the security people around Fina Bono control them, right? So maybe we, maybe we never know the truth, but what I know, he was killed. And let me just give you this instance about the killing, 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 killing. So they don't just talk about the three missing boys. One of those three missing boys was the son of Mr. Blambo. Blambo and I were in the same church, St. Mary Catholic Church. That family has been stuck continuously with disaster. His big daughter was considered by President Weir as his play daughter. She had a child for Emmanuel Potter, who is the Assistant Minister for Logistics, Elita Blambo. Elita and her family had just gone to a church function. They were members of the Dead of Marshall. They had just gone to a church function from there. She drove her parent home, trying to drive back to where she came from, right in Broadway. She jumped on a truck and killed herself. Hmm. The other boy, who was far younger than her, young fan, son of theirs, I think he was around 13, 14. He was not sick. He just complained about headache. He just fought and he died. Then his only big boy who was actually helping him to be a breadwinner in the home is the one who was found in the symbolic team. He died. It was like in a year or a year and a half, three of his children just died in such mysterious yeah. matter. When the first one they called Elito died, President, we had attended that funeral service at Samaritan Catholic Church because the girl, as I said, was considered his play daughter and she's the baby mother of Emmanuel Potter. Even though you should treat all the citizens without any preference, right? But by human nature, this closeness of this family of President Weir would have made you to think his interest in that basic boy's story would have been stronger. 
But for him, he has died that in this particular family, they've been followers of the CDC, same president, we are keen to the, to the political stand. Right? But that's how we happy. Now, the only time we saw some of the things that happened in the country happening was when they walk in. Where you found three headed, you found three headed men, body phone in the street. Our Vanja Reggie body phone to play island near the river. The other person did body laying down on the side. It is what has been happening all during our period. If it is that one princess dying, and something they will come later and see that TB, or a lady who said she was on the phone with somebody and say, Oh, come, and she went to see the person, and then they left the phone her their body on the on the on the dump site, or give to them dying on Broad Street or Banton Yesra dying in this place. Just think about that. The, the, the country is in a state of, 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 of fear. And then in the midst of all these things, you remember, the president said, apparently in acknowledgement that the government has failed in its fundamental responsibility to provide protection of life and property, he said, you're going to have DSTV, CCTV. <laughs> I don't know how, how, how the mere presence of CCTV uh, protects someone's life. It is not that to record, but even at that time, even if has CCTV, they store a TV for yeah, your house. Yeah, that's why I have CCTV to your house. But I don't store we have TV for the CCTV that you have. Yeah. So, I feel sorry for the wife, right? I feel sorry for that four-year-old boy. But it's sad that I would say it's just sympathy and empathy we keep having for them because it will depend on the regime to say there will be a closure and we'll find the facts about what happened to Melvin. We may never, maybe, the several president, we are least power. And we have a leader who is sincere about all that has happened in the country and who will launch some special investigation into all these different nonsense that are taking place now. In, in addition to what is everybody's concern that a new government audit a new regime, that audit alone for financial reasons should not be important. But all these mysterious situations that are taking place that got no closure, to be investigated by any Thank legal government that comes to office. Thank you. So, uh, um, um, Daniel, you, we lost you a little bit. Uh, I know you wanted to change location, and uh, also your internet was giving a little problem. I, I, and I'm not sure whether you listen. You listen to the to the audio, right? To the video we play, right? Well, I didn't listen to the video, but I follow. I follow the. Yeah, we played a video about Melvin Ellis' uh, wife, and she where she talked about the issue. But the, the one of the most emotional part of the video was where her four-year-old son was asked as to what he wants for, for his father. He said, I want justice. And, and Senator myself and everybody who watched, you know, became very emotional. I thought that was a very um, um, touching moment. Um, no child should have to go through such tragedy. And, and when, the, when a kid can, 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 be, can feel let down by his government, his whole government, it speaks to the extent to which the country is is, is 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 going rapidly down the drain. So, you know, just quickly, let's just go, then we'll come to yeah, your level. For sure. Program. That's 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 the level of neglect Liberians are, are, go, are going, going through on the real leadership. Because as somebody who grew up on the old road, I've come to know Melvin as a person who is very cool, easygoing. I mean, I never had close interaction with him, but from a distance, I knew him very well. And I know that he was one of those recruited into the EPS when there was an ongoing reform uh, process uh, after the 2005 election. So, I mean, I know him when his devil reported. I thought it was very sad for some of us who grew up on the Oro. But the basic thing here is that why should a government that knows absolutely nothing about the death of a serviceman neglect on investigating his death? They can't even give the birth a death certificate. The government refused to issue the family the death certificate. The next thing here is, if if a serviceman dies on duty, is it Fina Bono who should call the wife of that serviceman to say that your husband just killed himself? So these are logical inferences that anybody could base the argument on to, to raise suspicion around his death. And of course, the devil very suspicious. There are officers in the EPS who have hinted to us that look, this man death was not just the way it was, it was presented, that it was not that he killed himself, something else happened. Okay. I don't think it is difficult to, to investigate 
whether the officer committed suicide on duty because the, the firearm that is sent to him, the PR said, all of the bullets in that firearm are marked. And, and, okay. and let me just give you the additional information, Daniel, that you can run it. The, 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 the wife said when she went to, to the funeral home to see the body, she discovered that there were several bullet wounds, one in his head, one in his chest, and one on the side. There's no way you can kill your, you can shoot yourself. Again, let, 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 assume, let assume somebody who want to commit suicide who first they shot himself in the neck or in the head. You, you so don't. By the time you hit the first shot, you, you Yes. Walk. So how will he again shoot himself in the chest? So that's a, you understand that's the reason why the government cannot investigate because there are so many there are so many secret killings there are so many shady things that happen under the government look uh, daniel yes daniel if i were investigating the first question i would ask where did he i'm talking about the location not on his body where did he shoot himself which area of his assignment did he shoot himself if he was on assignment within the proximity of the presidency, if he shot himself more than once, the first time he shot himself, you, you, where were you, the you other people? Orientated. Where were the other people? But that's what Nobody I'm saying. Nobody came at all. That's what I'm saying. So this, you know, you know so if, 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 if you call a forensic... For president, he has if, been done. He got been done in a pocket. He on a trip. Why would not be the motivation to kill yourself? Yeah. Assuming if, there's if, more division. You know, no, but Daniel, go ahead. I will just close up one. If a forensic, a forensic pathologist who is very professional will investigate the body, he will even tell you the range from which the bullets were fired. He will tell you what kind of bullet was discovered in his body and how did he die. The government has not been able to tell all of these things. And, you know, and come to think about it, what is the understanding of a four-year-old child? That he should go through such a pain if I don't die on duty. So there's no dignity in serving your country. His and father died on to duty. Pay the, the, the benefit. Yes, that's no dignity because the least you can give this man is to give his family the benefit of the doubt. But, but you're talking about benefit. Did you watch the funeral? I watched the funeral. It took place at that Baptist church on Kowatan Back Road. You watched the funeral? No, I didn't watch the funeral. The leadership of the very EPS stay away. Uh huh. Wow. Senior, see, yes, I watched the whole funeral. I told you I was very close ah. to Melvin, so I followed that. The, the, the senior officials at the Ministry of State, what well, minister, deputy minister, all the things, they stay away. A couple of EPS officers, not even in number. Probably low ringing, low ringing EPS officer. officer. Yeah, those who consider themselves a friend to, 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 to Melvin, a couple of them were there. A couple of them. No national leadership representation for an EPS officer who has served so long, not oh, one president, years. right? So they didn't take the whole, a whole barrier serious. Then you talk about benefit, they get time for benefit? A benefit. If the, if the man wife, who told you that she's in hiding and put her head, she and her child, if she put herself in harm's way and they get rid of her, who they use to pay benefit to? If they get time for benefit, you think they got to be running around and say she's not safe? Hmm. Since when Melvin died, Steven? Since when he died? Yeah, last, last year. Okay, so yeah, last pay, year, February. You can take two years to pay somebody benefit? You know, it, 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 so, yeah, in your so, I just say the thing is as clear as snow. So you see, in any criminal investigation, suicide is a crime against the person, the person committing crime against himself. Yeah, Daniel, yeah. Daniel, yeah. Daniel, we have to open the line. We have to talk about yeah. the party so, yeah, event we'll tomorrow. Talk, we'll talk about it. So for me, for me, for me, it is just it is just unfortunate that a little kid will have to go through such a pain, such a neglect at this at this early stage. I mean, it's a memory that he's not going to to forget easily. I mean, losing your father at age four. And the least you deserve is to give, be given justice. And the government cannot even deliver on that. It's very much unfortunate. And this is the reason why the repetition of the government is being seen on the international scene. Because there are people who are following all of these incidents. If you can have EPA officers going to work one morning and say, oh, the men commit suicide, and there can be no conclusion to the investigation. Eh? So it raises doubt. I mean, I mean, again, to the family, 
our profound sympathy for, for their loss, but it's just unfortunate for our country. Thank you. Senator, take us home on this one. So somebody who credibility and respect, uh, Cornelius Hunter, has just uh, indicated in the comment session that the EPS director was at that funeral and he spoke on behalf of the EPS. Uh, I didn't watch it. Uh, uh, PRC, he watched it. A colonial uh, respect. I'm not going to argue about it. I don't remember seeing it. Yeah, so uh, uh, let's take it that the EPS director was there and he spoke on behalf of the EPS. But that is not enough. My 11 years plus at the Ministry of Justice in the prosecutorial arm of government, a special assistant to the Solicitor General, informs my... my um, knowledge of this kind of investigation. When somebody commits a suicide, it's a crime. You must have the crime scene. What was the crime scene? Anywhere somebody committed suicide is a crime scene. Where's the diagram? Where's the crime scene? How did he shoot himself? How many times if they say, if he shot himself more than once, and if the crime scene was within the proximity of the presidency, at the first round of the first shot, what happened? Who ran there? Who were those in the presumity? Because that one person in the presumity of the president when it comes to security protection. So if, if the bullet goes off once, there must be almost immediate intervention of the rest of the other people. Because this is happening will, within the proximity of the presidency. Within the proximity of the presidency. With, uh, and not just the presidency, you're talking about the institution right now. The, within the proximity of the president, the yeah. physical president's body. So any bullet the president, sign serious... Any bullet sign is supposed to, is supposed to, to, to spark the alertness of the rest of the folks who are there to know who shot, why, and from where. And if the gentleman shot himself first uh, in a bit to commit suicide, then was there no rescue? So first thing you need to tell us, the crime scene. And the number of security officers that were deployed and what distance in between each of them and, and all of this stuff. But you can't tell me that somebody committed suicide and shot himself more than once, more than twice, hogwash. You're talking to somebody who may be a weird eh? who decide to suspend his sense of reasoning, decide to suspend a sense of, of, of humanity, even to a fellow man, and take that hogwash of an explanation that somebody committed suicide by shooting themselves more than once. And to even be to even be so precise to say. The first attempt at suicide, shooting himself, was in the head. <laughs> you shoot yourself in the head? You're done. You're done. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you can. If, if, okay, so if if the person if the person who committing the suicide uh, discharged more than one bullet, it will only make sense if it was automatic. Yeah, all three go off. Yeah, in your head. all three go off at the same time. Grrr, you know, automatic, but one after the other. You must only tell that to a weird eh, who decided to suspend his sense of reasoning and uh, uh, suppress any sense of humanity in him or her to accept that whole watch of an explanation. Thank you. So, yeah, so I mean, the people deserve justice and it is our role. If, if we're so afraid of, the, of being targeted, then let's give the people job back. Once we are. Uh, we will not be reckless with our life, but we can't be so coward and afraid and not to stand up to fight for our people, especially exactly. when they place us in the, in the place of authority to fight for them. And that is why we will resurrect this issue next week. And, and, and you. See, see if we go to your next thing, you know where you live here, there's no death that takes place in this country without the cause being known, right? Even in my own house here, if I died here, they're not taking me straight to a funeral home. Or if, even if I die in the hospital, the medical examiner comes and take that corpse away. And it is after the work of the medical examiner, the death certificate is issued for the cause of death. And I experienced that after my man Julius died. 
He died. He was in the emergency room. We're there with a dead body, everything later on. When it, after several hours, when the medical examiner was ready for the body, they came and told us, say, you guys will have to leave now because the body is about to be taken away by the medical examiner. So it was the medical examiner's work that said Julius died from X, Y, Z. It happens to everybody. So there's nobody who dies here. We don't know the only in that country. If I, if I, the funeral will not take the body, I said, if I had but that's what no the funeral home accepts the body. No funeral home accepts the body. We've got the medical yeah. examiner result. No funeral home yeah. takes body in this country. Nobody. Who removed? Who removed the body? Why did they remove the body? Who authorized the removal? What uh, uh, initial or uh, uh, criminal investigation that took place? Who who dismantled or tampered with the crime scene? We need answers. So this, well, Senator, the, we know who committed the crime, so you can't, you can't, we can't be asking for answers for the same people who committed the crime. And and including and Liberian citizens getting missing and the country sitting as if to say nothing happened. A, a, an election uh, officer in Grand Jira gone missing. Yeah. For Not over three anything. months, nothing. And you know, people people get people go missing for a while. And after a certain time, I think in keeping with law, it stretches up to seven years to deter to determine or declare to, the person to, dead. To declare you dead, yeah. Right. But between then, some a Liberian citizen goes missing, and there is no exerted or concerted effort at finding that person. Every issue of search requires final closure. Final closure. And until these things are finally closed, logically, whether the person is still missing or whether the person is dead and yet the is the recovery of the body, so that they then, they yeah, the yeah. 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 yeah, 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 during the Christmas season, he spoke to the people in the area and they informed Councillor Gonglo that the EPS officer was screaming and crying for his life. Yeah, Councillor Gonglo has said that several times, including on one of these uh, radio stations. And who committed suicide? Give me a crime for your life. Hmm. Okay. Oh. Okay. 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 Um, crime TV, yeah. For you to commit crime, <laughs> you gotta be brilliant. For you to commit, my brother. Crime in... If I'm not watching CNN or one of these news uh, institutions, I'm on investiga investigation, investigation discovery, discovery channel. Yeah. In fact, yeah. in fact, because of that, I got one TV for myself. It's not my wife won't touch that channel. She got to go you on a TV. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it tells yeah. you when you watch it, those channels. It tells you. For you to commit crime, you have to be very yeah. brilliant. I mean, to come out it's, it's, inform it's informative, it's eye-opening, and it says a lot as to how to bring closure to cold cases or to how to, to, to bring to book things that people overlook. The little so details mystery, that people oh, they have to, they have to solve the misery. And yeah, yes, uh, I am why, so yes, fond of that yes, channel. Yes, why, yes, why, yes, why you find it very interesting to watch that channel because you also learn that to every crime, there's a trace. Yes. Yes. Every crime, yes. Is a a crime is like solving crime is like solving yeah. so, Yes. So, and when we were in school, we brief a case where this guy he took, I mean, loom for the bank. It went bad for him, so he committed suicide. But you know what the guy did? The guy went to the the, the S factory and bought giant star block of S. His garage was like tall, so he stood on the block of S and hang himself. So as the S was melting, the rope was hanging his neck. So he died here on garage, and when the police got on the scene, they were wondering as to how that man got up there, you know, with that kind of height. So the investigator went last, and he go. Yeah, they saw they your, your, your receipts. Yes. What, what, what you use your credit card? Garage, and where the man went lastly was in the, at the X factory, and they discovered that the man bought block of eggs and he stood on to hang himself. So people, somebody, somebody investigation would take years to conclude. But there has to be constructed. And that's why when you watch when you watch 
the TV and you and you and when you listen to to, to some of the explanation the government gives about some of the crime, you don't straight in line because even the those line. of us who are not experts, but we just watch the TV, we in our mind we're able to put pieces together and try to at least rationalize some of the crime that you know that for instance, if they have a not sit in a car and, and the meta formulas and the meta formulas investigation discovery channel is a favorite as well. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I had to yes, say I, that because, yeah, you know, she's, she's our favorite panelist on Monday. Yep. So, guys, right. uh, you know, uh, I mean, it's, it's a good conversation and uh, we wish the family well. Um, we'll keep following up on it um, and, and, and we'll keep uh, updating our audience on, 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 on what is happening. So, now let's, you know, um, the second and final thing before we go to the line, let's just run over this quickly. And, and, and Senator Dillon and you and Daniel will speak to this more because um, they, it is the Liberty Party. Um, the party goes to uh, to, to Basel, Grand Basel County, um, um, this weekend to read on a fundraiser to, to begin the whole 2023. So let me share with our audience the uh, flyer of the, um, and then uh, we can start the conversation. So it says uh, Liberty Party membership and fund fund drive um which will happen in uh is tomorrow actually uh there you see the picture of uh, senator yomli kanga who is the political leader of the liberty party so tomorrow in grand Basa county liberty party for senator Dillon and daniel will speak to us more on what will be happening in in grand Basa. so there you see it so um let me <clears> let me begin with uh with, with daniel then Senator, then P.I. can wait because, you know, you more have more information on this. So, Daniel, you in Basel, right? What is the... So, describe so, for us, describe for us the scene. Well, it's, it's, very, it's very exciting here. It's very exciting here. I arrived here yesterday evening, and what you see is like, it like there will be a campaign launch here tomorrow. That's how the, the atmosphere appears to be. You see people from all walks of the city, people coming from River says from Mosserado County to Grizzly Occasion tomorrow. We we're on the radio this morning, and there are people who have said, old folks have said that they will come in tomorrow, Get they, they came to the, get, got, a, got their envelopes, and they're going to drop the envelope off at the program tomorrow. Uh, the enthusiasm across the communities in, in Grand Vassar County, Buchanan City specifically, is very high among partisans of the Liberty Party. Uh, the, the home of the political leaders, a matter of fact, and the headquarters of the Liberty Party are very active. You see, I have to change my location because where I was sitting initially, there, there were too many interruptions from the background. The noise, people coming in, music playing, people coming in from Morovia. Honorable Yeke Cordoba uh, just arrived with uh, folks from his uh, his, his brigade. Uh, the son of the former vice president, Jojo Baca, also just arrived with Interrise. The Liberty Party National Youth Congress came in earlier on today. The Women Congress just arrived. So we have a full house here. A full house, and we, I mean, tomorrow promises to be very exciting. Uh, from what we have heard from the partisans so far, they consider this moment as, a, I mean, a real breath of the Liberty Party because so much has happened to the Liberty Party. According to them, the party have been in the news for the bad reason, and they're happy to see the political leader uh, embarking on this kind of initiative. For them, many of them told me that uh, it, it is the process of owning up to the responsibility of taking care of the party. So they are very happy to be a part of it because. They believe that you can only hold your leadership accountable in your party when you begin to support them. The idea that a political party will be funded from the pocket of one individual is not a good thing for the institution. Yeah. I mean, especially so given what has happened to the Liberty Party of late. So, I mean, and the, the political leader herself speaking to them indicated that we need to have Liberty Party, I mean, inclusively involved in the 2023 presidential election and to do so we're not going to partner with people who are going to be, I mean, breading on any, any political collaboration. Liberty Party has to bring something to the table in terms of financial competence. So, yes, uh, many of them said that even the 20 million was not sufficient. They're going to raise the money. But we, said, we, we told them that it is just the launch of the 20 million fund drive. If we can raise about 50 million tomorrow to begin to fund the operations of the party in Grand Basel County, River says, Mark Gibby, and other parts of mm -hmm. Liberia. I mean, ahead of the 2023 presidential election is going to be a good thing for us. So, yes, I mean, it's a good thing that the partisans appreciate the idea that the political leader, ready to the wise, the political leader, the leadership of the party, to the wise, to organize the program. 
you know, in like in Liberia, in Liberty Party, when we're able to raise money, we can come to our people. In all political parties, they can go to Atlanta, Georgia. So our people are very excited about it. They say they want to own up the party. <laughs> so it's good. It's good that we're here. And I, I mean, I can say to you, I just wish all of you guys were here tomorrow. Maybe the class below that can go live from Barcelona. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll work with we'll work with Senator Dillon to go live from the yes, class. Yes. So that we can yeah, hear and we, maybe we, uh, we can get one or two persons to come and talk to the people why it's happening there. We can bring uh, you know some of the actors on the show briefly just to talk. So we'll so work we also, with also, we also have t shirts. We also have t shirts that are on sale, we ran out of stock. Uh for a few hours a day. We had to send it for more t shirts from 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 Morovia on the printing press. Priscilla Cooper, who is the, the chair lady on the committee, just arrived with the t-shirts. People are now queuing out at the at the, uh, the headquarters of the Liberty Party, uh, purchasing their t-shirts because they want to identify with the party. We also encourage them that if you cannot get a t-shirt because we ran out of stock, you are a Liberty Party, so come up with anything that resembles Liberty Party tomorrow. Let's go green for Liberty Party. And the, the, the call has resonated very well with our partisans, the, the euphoria. The momentum is very high. Here. There were many persons looking up to the deceased in the Dillon, but then he couldn't come. I know he'll be here early tomorrow to have more interaction. You got, you got, you got to <laughs> laughing. You know why you're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Look, a Liberty Party comes alive tomorrow in Grand Bassett County. Uh, it has been long coming. Uh, Ambassador Joseph Nima Buaka will be in Grand Bassett County tomorrow. The, uh, the folks, the leadership of UP uh, is expected as well. But the partisans of the party within our region have been yearning for this, the political action, the awareness to come to alive. So they, they want to be a part of their party. They want to own their party. And we are about to begin the road to 2023 to bring our party alive. The base of the party has been made a little weak by some of the things that have been happening at the leadership level of the party. It has been so unfair to our partisans and our party, and we are on the move. Yaga Koluba is already in Grand Basel County. A host of other folks who want to see a change in the UB, 2023. The UB is in route also. I just thought to mention that. The UB yeah, the, the, the formal and current leadership of UP will be in Grand Basel County as well. We got a commitment. I will be in Grand Basel County. We'll rally our party base. We'll rally our people. And we will not stop in Grand Basel County. We'll take it to Magibi. We'll take it to Riverside County. Monserrado will rally Monserrado County. We'll rally this country. Steve Zago from Lofa will rally the base there across the country. And trust me, the last time I said on this show, that that take no longer comment. Yeah, please read it. She, she said she need me so that she can send money. She can send her contribution to 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 the party because she's been a member of the party uh, from the days of the when you were on the old road. So she's a long-standing Liberty Party. Uh, That's wonderful. Yeah. These 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 activities can 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 motivate the the our people and and rekindle their hope. And we are ready to move. We're ready to shake Liberty Party base. We're ready to wake up to let our people know that we are headed for 2023. We'll be an integral part of it. We'll be we'll be a serious force to welcome to, to welcome with in 2023. And the 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 political side that we support to help rescue this country. We have a serious base. We're talking about form, and that's what, uh, we're talking about substance. We're not talking Enough. about form. <laughs> we are talking about the last time on the show when people said, "Oh, why Ed Snow and other folks are wearing George Weir 2023 and neck is not talking." I said, "You come across as whining when you do that." Since neck, the elections commission is sleeping. The government is campaigning. Even County Tour by the president is turned into 2023 campaign. Even school fees paid by the president from budget is turned to 2023 campaign. Why are we whining instead of waking up? We got a voice, we have the grace, we got a clout, 
and it's time for us to 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 to, to wake it up and utilize it for the sake of our party and our country and our people. And we're beginning Grand Bassa tomorrow. We'll shake Grand Bassa County tomorrow, and the message will go loud and clear. And then we'll take it into Magibi. We'll take it into Riverside County. We'll bring it into Maserato County. We'll take it across the country. Please, we'll take it in, 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 in Basel to Retro Tuba. Please put it in, in, the, in Basel so they can hear it. Uh, Y'all will be there tomorrow. Steven, will, I mean, uh, uh, Pia will put it in Basel. Don't do that in here to me, yeah, man. <laughs> More for long guy. Whatever you want to tell me, I guess. Yeah. You know what? 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 You know and so, yeah, first thing in the morning, God willing, I will be in Grand Basel County and the line will sign from, from, from Farmington River, from Farmington Bridge. When I hit Farmington Bridge, the county will feel it. But please make sure you please make sure we bring the, the class tomorrow live on the it will uh, be it will be live. We have invited the media, the media is invited, and it will be live on various social media platforms. It will be live, hopefully, on the radio in Grand Basel County. It will be live on this class reloader page as well as well as well as on my page and all that stuff. And when I'm doing that commentary tomorrow in Grand Basel County. I will speak Baza. Thank you. Pia, please put in Baza for all. I'm a Baza, you know. <laughs> Loga, wait, wait, Pia. Pia, wait, Pia, before you go. Pia, before you go. This is the boy here, that, that Baza boy from Rio was Poor Baza, who do nigga? It's a Baza, it's a nigga, but we need poor Baza, who? I'm telling you, Rocky. You don't you, you know what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm telling him to put it in Baza because he Baza. No, 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 no. I don't want to be here. I'm putting it in Baza. Interview okay, members. okay. Yeah. Ask all the questions in Basel. Ask all the questions in Basel. Then we'll be. No, but, 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 but on, a, on a serious note, on a, on a serious note um, there's not much that we have to say on this because like, they don't say we have to give the colors chance to, to really participate. We've gone almost the two hours. Yeah. But it's a, yeah. good, thing. It's a good thing that the military party is, um, is, is, is rallying her base. Uh, electioneering, politics, political party work, you know, is also based on base. Right now, in America, yeah, by November, you have the midterm elections. Everybody trying to rally their base. President Biden has been uh, moving around Pennsylvania. He, he's moving in different parts of Pennsylvania for seven days. Yesterday was uh, one of the most powerful messages I ever heard from him at his age. Uh, talking about fighting for the soul of, 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 of America. He, he, didn't, he didn't sound like um, somebody who is over 80. He was fiery. And, and, and I've been watching the analysis on CNN, what people think about it. All people are doing now, they're trying to rally their base. And, and and it's also good because of late president. Nigga, move to the point, go to the point, but I don't care what Liberal Party energy. This is politics. I'm trying to look. If I've been trying to 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 reach you with the state of the politics in the US, it shows the respect I have for Liberal Party. And so you jump in all you want to short chain here. Okay, I'm not, we'll, 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 in Basel, you got one million radio station, radio Duba, radio D, all that message all over in Basel. So don't worry about Basel, Benny. Let's talk what we're supposed to talk. So it's a good thing, they don't, but I mean, especially considering that your work has been characterized by a lot of conflict, the party has been distracted, uh, you brought in a leadership, a chairman, who in my mind I can just describe as somebody who came determined and committed to destroy your party. And the fact that you can stand up to that and, you, you, and you're trying to rally the base of your party and making them to even see the need to contribute to the party is good. Because one of the major problems we have in Liberia is that every political party that exists, because the, 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 the leaders of those parties will always go in their pocket. You always, always know who want to be president on the party ticket before anything. And if we get the people involved and you know, putting their, their, their money where their mouth is, it can help to change that kind of trajectory. But the selling for us, Stephen, I believe as long as you have your money, you'll see that. You'll be that bronze skin, you'll be where 
or the bronze skin party or the pong, the crow crow. The yoga bed, so question that you might have a act when it was in your crow crow. So nobody more began about the party or you pong crow crow. So on the party of the boy yan, maybe a darake, two darake, three rabbit, and bread again a poke. Maybe get party of Capadoni. You got party of the Capa Blain. So ni mada erin bo ko anyo ma press secretary ke ake lo de pare ni we ga ma anyo jaro so be say na ka be so ji be ge le wa de pare bo pa anyi ma we na wo e anyo ara bo abo ke boss wo abo ke boss wo ma me don say abo ke boss wo in series man no guy ni ana ana so le do finish I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Now you have a good change of basso. Yeah, let me let me give you a big round of applause. Yeah, that's right, man. Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, my so, so Stevie, get, be, get before you proceed. There are people asking how they can send their support to Liberty Party. So I just sent you. So the... yeah, what you need to do for us, uh, 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 um, Daniel, get that information tomorrow when we go in. When they, when we go in live, we'll, we'll put it on the screen so people can contribute. No, but he has some. He has the information now. You can yet tap it and stick you it. You can tap so it. That those who... on the yeah. I, I saw yeah. the room already. No, put it in. Put it on the screen. Don't put it, no, I mean, put it in the chat room on this app. Okay. okay no. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. Put it in the chat room on the screen so that he yeah, can get it. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we can go to the land now, right? Yeah. Yeah. We'll be in Grand Bazaar County. And, uh, um, so that the that number we're using there, right? On the screen. Yes. That's the number we're using. You can dial this number locally you can also dial it on whatsapp or if you call it on whatsapp it, the local number the local call won't interrupt because i got it on two separate phones so you can now begin to call in on 0777 locally 0777 you can also call the same number on whatsapp and you you will get you will go through if you're listening, you can now call 0777-510-588. 0777-510-588. Tomorrow be in my Liberty Party gear. I'm sleeping tonight, excited that we're about to shake the fabric of our party and wake it up. And to let our people themselves own their party by committing and sponsoring their party so that when the time comes, nobody will say that they were the ones who were doing it. And so let me take the first call here. Yeah, hello, your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, hello, my first senator. I'm Bobby Tuerquen from Kodiak County. Bobby, welcome. Yeah, this is my first time to listen. I've been looking for this particular station. I saw my friend phone, he told me, okay, I'm there. I'm very happy to be listening to this station. And I will never listen to the screen to any other again beside the station. Thank you very much. I always follow your progress, your everything that happened in the country. Thank you very much. Once again, I'm Bobby Kramer, Police Academy. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, we'll take this one. Hello, your name and where are you calling from? Maswell, Dean from Grand Basel County. Maswell? Yes. From Grand Basel County? Yes, Grand Community. Radio Duba on? Sure. Okay. Go ahead, Maswell. Yeah. I'm going to watch the conversation. Now, 
We are going to weed within the front end and strengthen it to put it away in front. No, you are OG. Okay, yeah, I say we are about to weed. We're going to pack it and strengthen it. We will come. Yeah, we'll come for all rules and for all rules hold. Yes, ready to go all right. Okay, thank you, my brother. Thank you, Mazra. We'll come in there. We'll check the place. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. And so we'll take the next call. Yeah. Hello, my name is My name is, my name is Matthew Jeff Wilson. I call from the office of the Federal Initiative for Latin Development. Thank you very much, our Senator, for the exposés and everything that you have discussed on the radio. Well, uh, there are so many things you did mention. My, my attention has been turned around too, and now one has been two. One has to do with uh, the fundraising program uh, relating to LP or Liberty Party, and in terms of the 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 the, the, the recent vote against the the, the female lawyer uh, being uh, as a chief justice. Well, uh, first and now this is the issue now. Uh, to the Liberty Party issue, uh, for me, <coughs> is very good and is welcoming. But I want to ask a question, and that question has to do with uh, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it is it is it the the the, the national chair president, which is Musa uh, Azam Is he is he aware of this uh, fundraising program? Will he be here tomorrow? If yes, thank God. Now to the issue. If no, what then what happened? Hello, fam. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, now, okay, thank you. And uh, another one has to do with the, the, the recent, uh, the, the, the recent uh, uh, vote against the, the female uh, lawyer. My main question, what, what is the reason for which uh, the female senator voted or you people voted against the, the, the female uh, lawyer? Because, you, uh, so hold on, to, did you follow the hearing? Yes, I'm, open, I'm, open, I'm open this Senate to you, the people. I bring it live on my page. We talk about it every day. The Liberian Senate now is open. We even have Facebook page where all these hearings can be very, very open oh, to the public. Senator, oh, oh, Senator, for the benefit of that, I think many people are not following because of... It is, our view, of it is our view that she's not, she doesn't, she's not suited for that position. It is our view. From our interview, from the confirmation hearing, abuse of power, and other stuff, she uh, conflicting one decision over the other. It, it was our view that she was not qualified for that position. Uh, okay, uh, on the issue, uh, on the issue of Musa Azambili, will he, will he be, will he be attended more? Is he aware uh, of the full raising program? It left to him. Okay, thank okay. you. The ballot board hearing it? Yeah, of course. Hello, your name and where you calling from? My name is Fidel Skule. I'm calling from Gandan City, Nima County. Fidel, mm. welcome. Okay, thank you, uh, Dylan, for all of the information tonight. You know, the little disappointment we have tonight is you people not on FUG in Gandan City tonight. Okay, uh, little... we, we, yeah. we, 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 we look into that. Yeah, but I just want to commend you people for the information tonight. And one of the things that got me so happy tonight has something to do with the way thing is going to happen now when it comes to Liberty Party. You know, for some of us, our thing in the country is how the government will be considered come 2023. And when things going off here sometimes in Paris and we worry a lot, but I think God has said people around there to put in together and I think will come to that direction. Thank God, thank you for all of you people who put in the idea together for the program tomorrow in Grand Barcelona. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me, let me take this Hello. one Hello. on the WhatsApp Hello. line. Hello. Yeah. Hello. yeah. When you take that yeah. call, uh, mm. please allow us to have on somebody who is an expert in something we discuss. Okay. Um, Dr. Dr. Rockefeller Cooper, is a Liberian, he's a forensic Hello. death investigator. He okay. does forensic autopsy. Hello. So we got a caller on the line. So, the yeah, show keep you on the line, we're, we're, we're putting you on. Yeah, Hello, yeah. caller, your name, where are you calling from on the WhatsApp line? Uh, my name is Victor, I'm calling from the US. 
I just want to extend my yeah. I just want to extend my condolences to the lady. I just want to encourage her to stay strong, take care of her kids. But for Justin in Liberia, it's so difficult. I don't think she's gonna get it. So let her just. I pray that she will get her strength and courage to take care of her children. I want to congratulate the wedding party for the stand they are taking. To stand by their party and make their party be what they want it to be. For my new point here is. I want to ask Mr. Delon. Yes, sir. Mr. Delon, I can't start this. Yeah. Mr. Delon, I can't start this call. You said about the pension and benefit for president, senators, president. Can you please just discuss about five minutes? Give me a stay on it, please. No, sir. We discussed that in life on Monday. That that law been existing even before uh, the no, I understand, but it was. It yeah, it was a minute. It was a minute. In order for you to understand it, you need extensive discussion about it. So don't just mind it that even some people, even getting the feel that it is a new law that we just passed for ourselves. I will explain mm -hmm. that law on Monday. Mm? Mm -hmm. Yeah. At what time? Where right in class. Uh, okay, I hope I have a time to follow you. Yeah, thank please. You. Yeah, great. thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, let uh, Rockefeller come on. After them. So, as I said, we have Dr. Rockefeller Cooper. He is a forensic dev investigator. He's here in the US. He has done several forensic autopsies. Uh, he followed our discussion on the, the death of Mervyn and other issues. And you want to bring him on on Monday? Uh, well, he just want to say something for now. We can talk okay, about sure. it. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, he has some opinion about what we're discussing. And so, Dr. Rockefeller, how are you, sir? Yes, yes, I'm fine. Thanks for having me. So, we're glad to have you on. I, I'm glad that you were able to contact me, having followed uh, what we're discussing. And as a forensic dev investigator, I'm sure you have some opinion on what we were discussing. For us, we are not investigators. We were just discussing from the layman point of view. Yes, so what have you to say based on what you heard us discuss? Yeah, so uh, let's start. I, I know I heard uh, Senator Dillon, you know, mention not just the, uh, the Melvin Early case, uh, but other cases as well. Yeah. So well, let's start with Melvin Early. Um, I did follow the interview that um, Costa had with her as well yesterday. Now, there's no reason as to why an investigation was not carried out. But looking at the situation from uh, a forensic perspective, when more than likely uh, the late agent early was not even in possession of a firearm to have defended himself. That's, you know, that is, that is, that is very, that's a very key point that needs to be looked into. Because obviously, if a person is armed, he's not going to sit back and let people, uh, you know, to, I mean, to just come and take away his, you know, his precious life. He would have put up some sort of resistance. Now, the body should have been, I should have, should have undergone a complete forensic examination. And it's only fair to someone who has worked in the service and a family man as well. So, you know, basically at this point, the matter, uh, you know, should still be considered as, uh, you know, an unresolved case, okay. you know, uh, you know, and, and, you know, and I'm glad that, you know, that uh, Senator Dillon is here and I hope that this will be something that they can put on the floor. You see, the problem here, uh, Senator Dillon is, uh, in Liberia, and perhaps you all are not aware, over the years, you've heard of autopsies taking place in the country. You must look at the qualifications of those who are doing the forensic examination. Since, and let's just start with the, uh, from the, 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 the WIAS administration. The, ex, the, the exams that have been carried out, or the post-mortem exams slash autopsies that have been carried out are not forensic autopsies. So because of that, you had what would be synonymous to misdiagnosis. Imagine you have a uh, you know a condition that needs to be addressed surgically. Instead of a, a surgeon addressing the situation, you have it. You have a physician assistant who is doing it. The moral to the story is, you must ask yourself: the people that are carrying out. You see, there are two types of autopsies that are carried out. 
you have a forensic autopsy and you have a clinical autopsy. Now, a forensic autopsy can be performed by individuals of the following category. Preferably, a forensic pathologist. If not a forensic pathologist, you must have a pathologist or a doctor who has received adequate training and knowledge in forensic medicine and forensic pathology. Now, an autopsy can also be performed by a medical examiner. A medical examiner could be a doctor who, uh, who has undergone extensive training and knowledge in forensic uh, medicine and forensic pathology. And also to add to that, as you were saying, uh, Mr. Pierre, you talk about a medical examiner doing a top step. So the medical examiner, like here in, here in the U.S., like, uh, you know, a medical examiner, as I previously stated, could be a doctor who has trained, for example, a general practitioner, okay, who has trained in uh, forensic medicine and forensic pathology. What they would do is they would carry out the forensic exam, and then the tissue samples that they would take we will send it off to the pathologist to make histopathology uh, uh, diagnosis, okay? With that being said, some forensic pathologists also serve as medical examiners, even though they are forensic pathologists. And that is because there's a shortage of forensic pathologists here in the country. Along with those individuals, you will also have your death investigators. They are the ones that they work close with the coroner office and they will go and make an assessment. But you have here, for example, every single autopsy that has been done in the country is questionable and rightfully so. It is not based on public sentiment. Yes, I agree, the masses are not inclined in medicine, but I can tell you with certainty that every single autopsy that has been done under the WEA administration needs to be uh, uh, looked into. I have, I have had several faults, okay, with every case that has been done. Okay, example, so can we have Dr. Rockefeller on sometime you know, Monday or Wednesday? Oh, 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 fun time, oh, fun time. Fun time. Are valuable, but like Dylan was saying, because we have so many deaths in the country, I think we will have to, since I have your contact, we have to talk to you and bring you on separately on one of these shows as the guest, where you will have the time to go into detail of, uh, of, of all this stuff we're talking about. Um, but we, we, we appreciate the intervention. I will talk to you in depth after the show, and we'll make the arrangement for you to be in the class one of these days so that we can go in detail with all this, the plenty of depth we have in the country, not just with the, the, the Mary LA stuff. So I want to thank you for the valuable intervention, and let me talk to you after the show. Sure, thank most you, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, <laughs> when, when you call me on the WhatsApp number, when I take open your number, just hold on the line, I will put you on. If you call me on the regular number and I don't pick up, it means somebody is already on. If I, you call on the WhatsApp number and I open it, it means I'm, I'm putting you in queue. Eh? Then you hold on. Hello, your name and where are you calling from? On the local number. Well, I'm Ado Bessler and I call from Monrovia. Ado? Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Um, um, is it... Ado, can I pull you out? Yeah, listen to you, but I, you know, I'm, so I'm following. So thank you so much, Senator and Ado Bessler. Even though you did not raise it's a, it's a certain issues about the like, I wanted to read something about the library Senate that you spoke about, and I know you are very sustained, but I wanted to add to your voice. And I know you are a light, and I know you've been very diff difficult. Thank you so much for what you've done. But I, as a president of the Chief Officer Association, I want to really appreciate you on the public platform for the stand you took when you were in uh, the timber, where you talk about our well-being, about the issue of the ego. So thank you. I, I, I don't have much about the technical issues you guys raising about the pathologies and the rest of it, the report and the rest of it, but I want to stay as a style of working with you, how much I appreciate you, and how I think a lot of people appreciate you too. 
I just want to say thank you, and I hope you keep supporting us as we move forward to our issue of the Hugo and other benefit for the Liberian Senate, especially the Chief Office Staff. Thank you. Which office are you work in? I'm the Chief Office Staff of Senator that is Henry Fumutoba. Fumo okay. Thank you. Thank you so kindly. We'll continue to push. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, my brother. I was a staff before, so I understand why it means to be a staff at the legislature. Yeah. Thank you, my brother. Good evening, your name, and where are you calling from? Alia? Yeah, good evening, uh, Senator. What and time is it in Uganda, Senator? <laughs> oh, that is oh yeah. yeah, it's very late now. Yeah, wow. yeah. yeah. It's about one eighteen, one eighteen a.m. Wow. One a.m. Wow. One eighteen. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. being up. I would like to say good evening, yeah, to the panelists. And among the many threatening issues that have been discussed, one of the things that really took me off the sh the show for a moment it was a recording about the late Melvin. Mm. Wife, yeah. So we just like to express our sympathy to Ruth, and we want to tell her that she should not give up. Melvin will get will get justice. Yeah. Thank you. And another thing, I'm so excited this this evening concerning the Liberty Party. Mm. I'm not a Liberty Party partisan, but. Liberty Party is one of the parties that I personally have followed mm. from the time I began following Liberian politics since 1997. And it broke some of us hearts to see the Liberty Party being treated the way and the manner in which it went. Listening to you, that our political leader, I would say our political leader, because this is someone that I admire so much. Mm. I admire her courage, Senator Nyombli Kanga Lawrence. I admire her so much. She's a leader. She's a fighter. Hearing you saying that this fundraiser is going to happen tomorrow to revamp the Liberty Party. I'm telling you, Senator Dillon, you people have done extremely well to stand up for the Liberty Party. I want to say congratulations to the political leader, our lioness. Congratulations to you, Senator Dillon. You have stood by uh, Senator Lawrence. And every other leader in the Liberty Party that have stood by her, I want to say congratulations. And I tell you my 100% support for this fundraiser. My contribution is coming. Tomorrow, I'm part of it. Hmm. I'm so excited. I want to say thank you to everyone on the panelists. Mr. Pia, I I can enjoy your analysis. <laughs> thank Shano, you. Thank, thank you, you so much. You. And the moderator, thanks to every one of you. You have kept us awake this time of the hour just to follow Liberian politics. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Senator Delon. Thank you, my dear. Thank you so kindly. You will you will you will tell me the secret in my inbox. <laughs> oh yes, sure, sure, sure. We'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, and thank you also for your motherly support to everything we do. Yeah. Linking with mothers and the friends of Dillon with the rehabilitation center. Thank you always, my dear. Thank you so kindly. Yeah, sure. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, sir. Oh, the line are uh, buzzing. Let me take this one. Hello, Hello. your name and where are you calling from? I'm Avin Jimmy from Biafra, Military Grand Master Kanye. Avin, welcome. I am doing great. And you, Honorable? I put the boss, bro. Ah, okay. Well. Yeah, tomorrow will be the four reason in Grand Master. Uh, we are waiting to see you people. Yes. So I have, I have a problem. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, for the past time, the water party is one of the parties that we respect in this country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they believe in justice, they believe in law, party of law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And most of the say said that Senator Lawrence, including you, mm -hmm. you people are on suspension. And you believe that? And then. And you believe that? And you believe that for us? 
Yeah, because for one fan, he's a party chairman that we're looking up to. So, ah, uh, okay, okay. I'll see how you get him. Pause me. So, party so, chairman, yeah, party yeah, chairman. So, In one yeah, minute, no, yeah. no, I get patient for I that. I know you say no. I know you say no. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking off the last. I get patient for nothing. I know that you say no. no. But I already yeah. finished. Don't bring your AFC nonsense to me. I am clearly on the radio. Y'all go tell Darren Nathan to suspend um, comments. Then we'll know what a party chairman can suspend political leader. Exactly. Hello, your name and where you calling from? I'm calling from Mambabi. How are you doing? I'm good, thank God. Okay, I want to say thank you to all of you on the show tonight. And Mr. Pia, Mr. Pia, Mr. Pia, I, I mean, I'd like to hear him speaking the boss of my own show. Be your own. You know, man, I like you right now, tell me, dog. And I really, man, I really wanted to be with you, with you, with, 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 with you guys in, in Grand Baza because our old man decided to meet JMB will be there also to tomorrow. Okay, but well, you're welcome. Yeah, but we, we, we'll do that another time. But well, thank you, man. Yeah, thank you, my brother. Thank you. The, the party, you need party. I want people. Thank you, my brother. The people, senator. The people. <laughs> <laughs> my man, leave me, man. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let me take them away from the WhatsApp line. Oh, the color gone off there. Let me see. <sighs> Hello? 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 Yeah? Yeah? Your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, um, Moses Carter, I join you from Kakata, Maggiwi County. Moses, are you, you are moving in my badge, I was trying to call you back. The way you can call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, I read really nine the show. I have an appointment. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'm saying I'm um, Moses Carter. I join you from Kakata, Maggie County. Welcome, Moses. Oh, uh, Senator. Yeah, Senator Dion, let me say thank you very much. Uh, what's all are you doing for Liberian to Saturday with Georgia tomorrow? Thank you, my brother. I might appreciate. I might appreciate it so much. But I have I have a concern. Yes. Yeah, my concern is that uh, I want us, for me, I'm not on the party party scene. Mm -hmm. I'm a sympathizer for Unity Party, and I follow Ambassador Vakai. Mm -hmm. But what I want to do is that uh, what very sometimes, you know, uh, discourage is that we want the opposition to get together. Because we know the something that we go through in this country. I think when the opposition go together, it will help us. It will help us for all to for, for, all to, for all to make sure that we make a uh, president. We are a one term president. So, so Jess, how we more time together? Jess or Jess? Let me hear you. So, what are, what are, what are we for any other political party? Mm -hmm. What are we for Unity Party and uh, uh, any other political party? Mm -hmm. When we say this, would mm -hmm. you come together? Don't say, oh, I'm, I'm not part of the party. But the opposition should hold together. But who don't want to come together? Academy. But that's what I'm saying because we have other people. Maybe there was some program and say, "Oh, because the opposition, because most of the time we we'll try to convince people, they will tell them." But the opposition is weak. This and that. Like I was just discussing, you see, of uh, our education minister. Mm. I want you, on uh, Senator, your please call it. They they made it also because you have failed. You know the real place opposition weak. You know the real place opposition weak. Not from political uh -huh. parties. Opposition is very weak, and I will be. Uh, and in fact, I will insist to say, damn weak when it comes to the legislature. We are so weak. Yeah. We hate yeah. our people. Opposition united in the legislature is the number we have. Even if we don't get a vote, the fact that we can stand together and send yeah. a message. Yeah. We're to part the fact I'm that, that we can stand together on critical national issues and say no to yeah. this because it's not in the interest of the country and the people. That's where Of course, is. of now, course. The well, opposition is not weak because it, people want to exercise their right to contest. Opposition will not kind of opposition will not kind of gather through uh, uh, all together to contest on one ticket. No. Opposition understanding hey. is opposition <laughs> unity can also mean opposition don't attack opposition. Let's make the ruling government our target. Opposition, all your lawmakers in our legislature, your hold together and your vote together on critical national issues. That was opposition strength. Yeah. But opposition voting on one thing, another opposition voting on different things on the same yeah. thing. And then you we say, that? then so we say, oh. yeah, opposition is damn oh, oh, weak oh, oh, when it comes oh, oh, to the legislature oh, 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 and it's so vexing and disappointing. Yeah, oh, we're doing a school. 
They come in, sitting there, and seeing school fees are go up. I have my two children, the school, they're attending 30,000 or one person. So now, where, where do you think we get that money from? And the minister and I cannot make any pronouncement why school fee has increased. Moses, I, yeah. you know, uh, you know, we cited the Minister of Education. I will let you go. I will explain this so I can bring your credit. This is very touching. I will pause the call. Uh, Stephen, you will allow me. Uh, mm -hmm. Look, sometimes it can be painful. On the strength of my communication, the Liberia Senate summoned the Minister of Inform uh, Education and his entire team. They appeared before us. I made mm -hmm. a case before my colleagues in open plenary session with the media all involved or uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, watching and carrying it live. Mr. Minister, why is it that school fees so high and high in this country, no quality? What are you doing for us to fix the public schools and put it on par or better quality or from the private schools so that we can afford our people, our children to go to public school Free, but with quality from kindergarten to 12th grade. Why is it that pop private school school fees so high with no quality and no reason? And the minister asked for time. The ministry went across the country, did tax force investigation and found and came back before the Senate and found that their own investigation showed proof that the increase in school fees across the country was unjustified, cannot be justified. And that the ministry, the ministry had devised a means by which the schools that were increasing fees across the country without justification will refund the variance in the increase. For instance, Stephen Johnson High School first grade last year, entire academic year was $100. The same Stephen Johnson School this academic year first grade is now 650. What in, what informed the 550 dollars increase? What were you not providing last year that you will be providing this year? What did you do to improve the quality? Did you include new quality teachers? Are you not including extra curricular? Like, are you building library that you did not have? Are you not teaching computer science that you did not have? What did you do? Value added. What? What value added for which you are increasing the fees? And the minister came by and reported to the Senate that they devised two means by which they will ensure that the schools that were guilty of this hike on our people will be made to refund. One, if the schools refuse to pay, they will not renew the operation license for the following academic year to compel them to pay. Or two, if a child was in first grade last year and in the same school, this year, second grade, that variance that was taken from that child will go against the new, the new yeah. year's school fees. Mm -hmm. Right. So the means by which that could be implemented was already devised and we came and we voted as a Senate. Mr. Minister, why have you not implemented this? Why is the media not happy? It? Why civil society don't jump on this kind of thing that benefits the country and the people? That child in River G that will get refund, that poor parent in Lofa or Sino or Gambasa or even any part of Montserrado who will benefit from the kind of advocacy determined by the Liberian Senate through one of their own. Forget about what is Darius Dillon, the kind of thing. To put the regulatory power into effect that the Ministry of Education has. Why is it not being implemented? Politics. It will implement a thing, and the people across the country start to benefit. Then who advocated that Senator Dillo, his political score card will go up. Exactly. I, I didn't go, I didn't go to school political gains. I went to serve and so my service can impact. People can feel the impact and benefit. One singular action by the legislature, by the Senate, can benefit the country, such as this. School coming open now. Everybody coming to cry on high intuition. The Minister of Education has his own school. He will not regulate private school because he doesn't want to regulate his own school. Why should I, why should a school, why should a school in this country charge 10 US dollars for information sheet? Exactly. What, what's in our, what contains in our information? Like so much on our one sheet. And you get some society information. You pay ten dollars. You pay ten dollars for a ream of paper of about five hundred sheets. 
uh, can understand your printing costs. And you, and you charge him, parents and students, $10 for information sheet. And you can you must buy it from the school. You can look at your friend. When your friend managed to get $10. You can take that information from there. Yeah, you can register your child. No. Yeah, you can. No, you must buy it. When the thing started where Stephen go to school, first grade, in the school, he registered to enter the school in first grade. Then second semester, the same academic year, he got to register financial with money to enter the same school, the same academic year in second semester. How can we, when, when will we ever do this kind of regulation to, and to, re, to, to insist that some of these fees being charged on our people? It's just unreasonable, but it would not happen when the people at the Ministry of Education themselves run their own schools and the president does not see anything about conflict of interest to fire some of these people. Yes. And the because Senate doesn't have the courage, and the Senate doesn't have the courage in majority to say, we will declare a vote of no confidence in this minister, and until the president removes that minister, any other thing the president wants out of the Senate that we're supposed so to give by law, we will put out a non-compliance posture until you remove this. That's why they call having balls and courage to do something for your country and your people, but it is lacking. And then other us take the blame, and it's very sad. It's yeah. painful, man. Hello, call yeah. your name, and where you calling from on a WhatsApp line? My name is Nepa Bryant. I'm calling from Brooklyn Park, Minneapolis, USA. Mother Bryant, go ahead. Welcome. I just want to, I just want to say thanks to all of you for this show. You know, the class reloader. Keep us informed. And I want you guys to know that we trust you and we are following. And so, my senator, Senator DeLon, mm. I've been supporting him from day one and mm. I continue to support him. Thank you. So, we want to know, I personally want to know, because I try to test the, the mobile money you, you put on the screen. Okay. But it's not registered to send with. So whatever I sent was in you know, or not delivered. Okay. So we we'll, so we'll, we'll need to attach that particular number to send with so that we, you know, away from home, can yeah. be able to make our contribution to Liberty Party. Farewell. So the rally continues. Whatever Liberty even... Party go, we are there. Thank you, dear. The, the rally continues on Monday, right on in the class, so that yeah. we can get the number straight, we can get the same with, and every means by which you can send it. You can send your contribution and those who are, are willing to do so to send it directly uh, yeah. to the appropriate authority. But I want to thank you so kindly. Keep us in prayer. It's a tough thing, but we are here. We'll continue to fight. I'm on my way to church right now. I pray for you every day. I pray for all of you. Amen. And we enjoy. You. For me personally, I appreciate the work that you guys are doing, especially speaking for the voiceless. You know, you are talking for people who cannot say anything. Thank you. And I just want to say thank you and God bless you. Be careful as you're going to be careful. Be careful. We're covering you all in prayer. Amen. We don't have nothing much to give, but we'll pray. And we know that when we pray, there's a God to answer. Thank you. So let God bless you. And please make sure the number is on send with because we want to keep supporting you, Liberty Party, our our political leader will continue supporting the Liberty Party wherever you guys go. Whatever you do, we are in for it. Thank, thank you. you and God bless. Thank you, Gorachi. Thank you so kindly. Thank you. Pia will take five more calls and then we start to wrap up. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, this is when I get confused when the thing did not the, the, the phone get ringing, my man. Hello, Yamina. Where you calling from? You calling from Grand Bazaar? You gotta lower the volume or that thing you listen to, so you can hear yourself directly. Look. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome, sir. Yeah, from Kumbang to Kumbang, 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 no, we did, we did campaign manager for Liberty Party all the time, Liberty Party for 2005 all the time. We are sending back tomorrow for that program. And we'll be praying with y'all to be fighting Musa, Musa, 
convene other from parts of which you have to put parts of the world and come to the trees. You can spend all the money without the view. They are not visible all for our family to get up. We suppose to be the West of Mogu. And the West of Mogu will follow up. We are not here for money. We are not money bear. Hello, your name and where are you calling from, caller? I'm sure to have been calling from Grand Bazaar. Are you calling from Grand Bazaar? Yes. But, you know, now we need a Bazaar. Plenty. Thank you. Go ahead, my brother. So, first, I really appreciate you for that. You need to stay friend and encourage me. But what they will do today is, we will see they will be there. Right. Oh, we lost in there. Hello, on the WhatsApp line. Hello, Hello. your name and where are you calling from? Yes, I don't know. I'm calling from uh, Pennsylvania. Welcome, sir. Your name? Yes, my name is uh, Charles Aisa Williams. Charles Williams? Yeah, thank you for having me on the uh, uh, Class Reloaded. I uh, first and foremost want to extend a uh, high commendation to you and your uh, your team for the opportunity and also for keeping our people abreast. Uh, what I want to speak to is uh, some of the injustices, especially uh, I'm a cousin of uh, Adolfitas one of the uh, auditor who was killed. And um, I think what's going on. lost him? Ah. And it, and it is a brand new one. You need to use one U.S. number to be taking American call. I think we lost, it. We lost our friend there. Eh? We called, lost man. our friend there. Eh? The calls are coming, Steve. Oh, I think we got internet problem. Pia, put it on, on the screen. That's the number, Pia, the 688. We're we back on. We're yeah, back that's on. It. That's it. Are we back on? Yeah, we're we not off. off. Now you, now your phone, we're not off. Oh, OK, now nah, nah, nah my internet. Eh? Yeah, internet. Yeah, yeah, internet. <laughs> OK, so I'm back here. Don't worry. <laughs> Call out your name and where are you calling from? Okay. Okay, I will take three more calls. Three more. Zero seven 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 five one zero five eight eight. We'll call get this caller on the WhatsApp line. Hello, your name and where are you calling from? The guy who said you are our coffee. Hello, my name is Pastor Moore and I'm calling from Charlotte, North Carolina, Honorable Senator. Pastor Moore, go ahead. Yeah, I want to say good evening to all of you there in the studio. And um, I want to say thank you to the Liberty Party for coming up strong. Uh, I've been following Liberty Party for many, many years. And I've always wanted to be a member of Liberty Party. But I strongly believe the trend, the trends that you all are taking in the right direction. It must mean that you all are following the example of the late uh, Councillor Kasprowski. And I want to say kudos to you all for taking the right stand. Um, my concern also has to do with the, uh, uh, the late uh, 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 male having early that was killed. And uh, uh, this is a serious matter. And our body on stand as the light. And I don't want, you know, uh, all of those cases of mysterious death in Liberia to be swept by the carpet. Because we have a tendency in Liberia, we just talk about something and we allow it to die down. Too many people have been victims in Liberia and the justice. And I strongly believe, I strongly believe if you all go out there to run a campaign, on the, on the justice that the, that those who were mysteriously killed, they will, they will bring them justice because the perpetrator are still around. He have promised the voters that war and economic crime goods will be brought to Liberia. I say kudos to you all. 
I say kudos to you all. Uh, 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 we hope that you all will have a, 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 a number up for someone else to send our support because it, it, it's not about Liberty Party. It, it is about us getting rid of the tyrannic government is in power and bringing the right people in leaderships that will set the foundation for those that is coming up because leadership is broken down you standing up and 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 i appreciate that and 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 the rest of you that come on the show to educate the liberians and i'm waiting to send my support i will be watching on tomorrow to see what kind of uh, means you people have on so we can send our support some kind of ways a 20 uh, million uh, it's going to be raised you know oh, thank you so much yeah, okay thank you thank, thank you, you, thank you, so yeah. Yeah. okay so we'll take two more two more and we're out of here yes sir Charles, who are talking to you, who said Peter is his cousin, is my yeah. friend. Yeah, 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 you know, I just like to speak to because not only I was 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 a victim of that. We have all the individuals, and every time an individual uh, start to speak uh, to some of the injustices that were perpetrated against our people, I think you it seems like you become a target. So we're we're really grateful that we have people who are speaking for the voiceless. We have people who are speaking to to these injustices. Uh, Liberia right now is is is, is in a state of of I would say we are facing crematorium, meaning that uh, there's a lot of fires that we are faced with: the fire of injustices, the fire of of, of hopelessness, the fire of, of starvation, to name a few. So uh, we believe that. With this kind of platform, uh, and and we will have the opportunity to expose the 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 enemy. So I'm really grateful, and I hope that uh, we will continue this good work to be able to bring closure. A lot of I, I was just listening to uh, another issue of an individual who, who was a victim, I believe, and and, and it seems like uh, they're claiming that he had committed suicide. So with with these kind of platform, I, at least we'll be able to call in. And, and we'll be able to get some information, insight as it relates to those in, in incidents and be able to get closure. So thank you very much. And I hope to come back and be on the show again well, uh, to be able to speak to some, some other issues that the, the country is, is faced with. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Charles. Uh, your brother, Abba, the entire country has been concerned, not just about Abba, but all of those who've been killed in Justin. And it's, it's, I hope that um, that the duos can be brought to justice someday. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, caller from Erasco Country Code plus six one. From Australia, please. From Australia. Your name? Yeah. Abraham Tama. Abraham Tama, what is that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much, brother. Yeah, thank you so much for your discussion. I really appreciate what you guys are doing. That's part all of us are now, yeah, man, we're not from the same political parties. We belong to the ruling party, but sometimes the fact that should be realized. We should know the fact. We should realize the fact. The play where, where our country is going now, honestly, we are getting disappointed. Especially when it comes to schooling, there's no reason that people should be chasing after children in the street not to sell. Because if you, if you, if they, they beside the school fees, since I, I was going to school in Liberia, the fees that school attaching to students now, since I was born in my life, I never see those kind of fees before. If you, if you storm your toes in the class, they will tell you, say, because you storm your toes, your slipper cut, you should bring it. Everybody, or every student should be in five dollars. 
or they should be 300, 300. We are here, at least we can afford. What's about those people that are in life? Because they don't have nowhere to get money from. I really get me paid their condition. I really feeling for them. If the government doesn't do anything about those schools, those private schools, a lot of kids that are in the street, no need to blame them. Because if the people can even farm food to eat, they go to school, you pay school fees. Beside the school fees registration, you print different, different fees. This one, that one. People are already struggling to send their kids to school. The school fees registration is enough. You compare with students to buy a uniform for $35, $33. What that for? It's very, very, yummy. It's, 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 it's so sad. And then the second one is Seti Brother. You saw the church that broke down to Kawa. Seti Brother Stira is substandard. Seti Brother Stira is not Stira, it's, it's weak plastic. It's how, not Stira. How do you know, sir? Senator Brother. I'm I have building, I building store. Okay. I used to close them when I was small. When I was small. Look at that thing. What are you doing? Oh, Lord. What are you doing? Yeah, so the reason I ask you that question what? because if an entity is doing substandard business here and destroying people's homes, then it calls for concern and for redress. That is why I ask because I, we don't want this platform to be a platform. Senator, one minute, sir. Senator Dela. One minute, Senator Dela. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, okay, let me listen to you. Uh -huh. talk, talk, Senator. We want us to get credible information so we can intervene credibly, both in this place where we are in this class, and then if it requires me taking it to the level of my office and the Senate, then I can take it from there. So that is why I ask, because I want credible something that I can rely on to intervene. Senator Dela, I'm building stores okay. to Omega. Okay. Senator Dela, if you see the zero, second brother facing, that my first time to see zero, it all does not have the same dimension. Okay. The zero you will buy from the same store, some are eight, uh, 34 feet, some are eight, uh, 36 feet, some are eight, 32 feet, some are eight, they will say, I don't know, uh, 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 32 millimeter, uh, 30 millimeter, the 30 millimeter when you look at it, the other 30 millimeter, the other 30, the other 30 millimeter, some are eight, even the size is that. It's not even square. Okay. Senator, they like to be look at the weight of the T raw. I was a small boy during those days in the 80s, in the early 90s. If you take T raw, the T raw, imported T raw from, 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 from uh, 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 India, you lift it up when I know that when you take it, you take a T raw, one piece of T raw, sometimes you have to call your friend to help you. Now, T raw, said you got a T raw. You can take five, you left. I don't know what kind of what kind of product you're using. You can even take four, less a person. So you got Somebody. you got your people on the ground here? Yeah, I got my people right up right the community junction. Can one or two, them, can one or two of them start by the office on Tuesday by ten o'clock in the morning? I will I will tell my I will tell my the guy that 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 doing the project for me, and then he will go there. You will go and see some of the steel rock. I don't know what I'm mean, still have steel rock because you used all of them to cast the pillow. So, so uh, steel rock, get the, you got this number. Let the person contact me through this number. Yeah, we, I will do that. Okay, thank you. I will, I will surely do that. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you. We'll take one more and then we'll go home. Mm -hmm. Then we'll take one more and then we'll go home. On the WhatsApp line, good evening. Your name and where you calling from? Hello, Senator Dillon. Hello, uh, sir. Uh, this, this is I'm calling from the United States. Yes, hello, say a people to every one of you, our country. Um, guys, I'm um, stressed some tangible um, things about our country. One of it that touched me so much is the education sector and the health sector of our country. So the education sector, even we bring um, the Asumana Sony or Minister Asumana Sony to the Senate and ask him what he can do to 
or empower the education system in Liberia, it will just be wasting of water on the door. One of the things I would like to recommend to, to the minister and the government as a whole is that Liberia need to ask themselves, who are we voting for for our leadership in the country? That's one. Is this person we're voting for has education and health as a priority? Now, these are the questions we need to be asking ourselves. Because we have some other poor countries around West Africa, like Gambia, the Gambia, Sierra Leone, Ghana. These people, normally what they do is that they give subsidies to private schools. They assign teachers to those schools. Do you understand? And what they do is that they pay those teachers. If you want to raise school fees, the first thing the government will do no, you cannot raise school fee because we are supporting the school. These are all subsidies that they give to school. So, even we can set up a budget, look at Ministry of Health. Even though what was there for the people to use the bathroom. You understand? So, which kind of health policy are you implementing? So, La Pira is just we, just, we just feel so sorry for our country. Thank you so much. Thank you, my brother. Thank you so kind. Yes. Steven. Yeah. It's up to you. I yeah, have to so, uh, le I, 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 I'm leaving the show with you. I have to. Yeah. I have I don't want to make anybody panic, but I have something to immediately attend to. But don't panic. Right. It's not it's it's not left threatening. You don't worry. But I have to leave now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't worry. Yeah, right. already, we're already closing. So um okay. it's good that uh Right. You can have you yeah, join us. So yeah. Um. So Pia. Um. Maria. Yeah. Uh, uh. Um. Your final thoughts as we wrap up. We're going almost three hours. That's the first thing I want to say. We 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 need to properly adjust ourselves because we had said the the show was meant for two hours. Yeah, we have to be exceptional today. Uh, 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 no, not yesterday. Apparently, I, I've been keeping time very perfectly, but. Because it's a service to the country and the people, so we don't have to complain. But we've been going three hours almost every day. So it, it, it means we're not monitoring our timing very well. Because you know where we are, we yes, we're committed, we got to do the show, but at the same time, we have to live. And there are things that are required for us to live. And everybody know here, yeah, America, it's not easy for you to take three hours of your show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it's, it's been good, but we just have to, you know, fix it small. In closing, and um, we are paying attention to the manifestation to our, to our country, visitation to our country, particularly the international media institutions that are coming. I'm reliably informed that the Al Jazeera team is in the country purposely for the, the sanctions. They're trying to compile a report on the, the execution or the impact of the sanction on the affected official, how the government the citizens and everybody else taking the sanction. But that's what they are there for. They reside at the Mamba Point Hotel. Um, I think yesterday, I'm informed they had a schedule to interview out of McGill or so, and then he checked out of it at the last minute. And that's what the international media don't like. If you do that, they will burn you. So when, when Al Jazeera returns from Liberia, we will see a lot of negativity on how the country has handled the sanction. In fact, I'm reliably informed also that during the same period, and at that same Mama Point Hotel, you have a delegation from the Global Fund. Um, government entities have mismanaged uh, a lot of the, the money available for the Global Fund. So the team is in Liberia. They are, I'm told they are demanding restitution of about 95, 91% of the expenditures, yeah, of the expenditures that were done uh, with the global fund money because those expenditures were deemed to be fraudulent. Uh, so very important things are happening in the country. And the last time I talked about Dr. Juma Nyankwe, the guy from Kari. Kari. Yeah, we talked to him just uh, this very week. Dr. Nyankwe, I don't know what the issues are. He was in handcuff. 
uh, the pictures are available. Yeah, I saw those pictures also. Yeah, yeah. Them. He was in handcuffs, and I, I don't understand how you would be harassing an individual like that. And the guy at carry at carry who they call the officer in charge or coordinator, whatever they call him, he's not even trained in any of the agricultural sciences. And then these people who go to school, Dr. Juma has a PhD from the University of Ibadan. He has a solid education. He was my classmate from BWI. He went to the University of Liberia before going for his PhD. And what carry was established for, for those kinds of people. And in the presence of those kinds of people, you're having somebody who is not even school in any of the sciences related to what carry does to be in charge and taking instruction from political actors you know, and harassing well-educated people who are supposed to help our institutions to function, it's sad. I mean, you, you, you don't think about it. You just turn left, turn right. Everything you see is just bad news for the country. Just bad news. And that's why I would be very disappointed if Liberians don't stand up democratically. Because we don't want crisis. We want war. We want coup. We want nothing. The only weapon you have is this democratic election that is coming next year. If Liberians don't stand up to rescue their own country democratically, then I'm afraid. Thank you for the show today, man. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you. Uh, and let's say thank you to all those who listen to us. Uh, thanks to Bushra Radio FM 98.1 in Montserrat, Shakta FM 102.5, <clears throat> Radio Tupa 89.1 there in Grand Bassa, Voice of Lofa 99.3 there in Vonjima, Radio Joy Africa 97.5 in Makipi. Radio, uh, Voice of Compa 106.5 there in uh, Nimba Radio Buta 102.3. And let me let me give my closing argument. Um, if you listen to the the video by the little four year old, especially when he talk about needing justice for his father, the emotions it come with, and not just the emotions, but the fact that a four year old is seeking justice, that alone should speak to the core. Of our justice system and how our government has failed to provide answers to the many questions, whether it's the family of the late gifted Lama, Abba Peter, Batin Niswa, Melvin Early, and many others, the three missing boys that have lost their life under this reckless and irresponsible administration. Liberians, we have a chance. The National Elections Commission has announced the timetable of election next year. We all need to take advantage of that timetable. If you're in the diaspora, go home, register, so that you can vote. The only way we can change the system is by voting. And let me say thank you to Pia for joining us. Let me also say thank you to Senator Dillon, who had, who had to leave because of some uh, issues. Uh, let me also say thanks to uh, Daniel, who was with us earlier. Um, on that note, we'll come to the end of another fascinating edition of the class window that we will be back here, hopefully tomorrow, um, on a special edition to cover the, um, the Liberty Party um, fundraiser there in Grand Bassa County. Let me say thanks to all of our listeners via Facebook, all those in the comment section who made um, contributions to the conversation. We appreciate you. We love you. Do have yourself a wonderful, 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 wonderful weekend. God bless you. It's all in the game, it's all in the game. Here, there, and everywhere. The people keep on crying. It's a game. And we go, we know. 
Oh, the deep. 